We are Brightside Home Theater. Podcast, the Home Theater Podcast. It's all about the experiences, the sights. I don't. Where, where's the sounds? The scenes. The sounds and scenes are delayed today, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. We had a little snafu with time zone uh, situation. <laughs> So uh, I'll let everybody in on uh, what's going on back here. I'm sitting here waiting. Steve and I, we we always communicate with our, the the times are always okay. I'll be on at three thirty, uh, and then everybody knows who's saying what. We don't go back and forth with okay, your time, my time, this that. We all know each other's time zones. So earlier today, I was like, all right, three thirty, I'll be ready to go. I'll be on there, getting ready for the four o'clock you know, show. And so, <laughs> so I'm sitting, I sat down, I was here at like three o'clock getting my uh, thumbnails ready, getting all the, the show prep and stuff. And um, the way the studio works is I email them out in the middle of the day, they can jump on at any time and check it out and come in. So I was expecting to see Steve. So 3.30 comes along, no problem. Uh, John is going to be delayed today because of work. Uh, so we knew that going in. So I was assuming where I wasn't seeing Steve, I was assuming that Steve was like, okay, well, so we're delayed. So I'll take my, you know, he'll take his time. So four o'clock comes around and it's like 4.11. And uh, he's, he's texting me right now. He's jumping on in five. So <laughs> he goes... I had like 411. I go, uh, yeah, I'm sitting here in the in the uh in the studio waiting. We call it the studio, waiting to join. And he goes, Yeah, I'll be joining at like 3 30, no big deal. And he's like, he's like doing some stuff right now. And I'm like, uh, and I went, oh no, <laughs> oh my God. So here in Massachusetts, in our time zone, we set our clocks ahead on Saturday. Apparently, they didn't do that over in Europe. They don't do that over there. So he was assuming the 3.30. Now, we, we were assuming it's a five-hour difference. Apparently, it's not anymore. So Steve's hurrying up to get his stuff done so that he can jump on with me right now. Uh, John is got a delay anyways, so he'll be joining with us shortly. Uh, so that's the show. I figured I'd get on anyways because people were waiting. So thank you, everybody, for uh, waiting patiently. Um, <laughs> but that's that's what happens. You know, hey, technology shrinks the world. But hey, we all still <laughs> stall it. We're all still idiots. Uh, so. Uh, I got a question here. Um, people are dying to know. I tweeted out earlier this week, Mike Schramm, Johnny Speakers, already dying to know, how does the SVS speakers compare to my NHTs? Uh, so earlier this week, uh, or over the weekend, I tweeted out the um, the boxes were delivered. I, I got some... Uh, I got an SVS Ultra Center, SVS Ultra Bookshelves. That's going to be my front stage. And I got some SVS Prime uh, Bookshelves for the back. Prime Satellites, called, for the, for the rear channels. And a couple of things I want to do with the... Uh, let's start in the back of the room with the, um, the Prime Satellites. So what I'd like to do is I want to actually compare those to my NHTs, which I have as rears right now. I have NHTs all the way around. The, the rear four are NHT uh, Super Zeros. And so I'm, re I'm going to replace the side ones with SVS. Uh, and I want to see how that sounds. And I can actually AB back and forth with some pink noise, with different uh, with voices and different scenes and stuff, and see how the, how the sound compares going to the two of them. And just to see if there's any tonal difference. The front stage, what I want to do is I really want to AB a bunch of scenes and I've been building, you know, my library forever, but with a bunch of uh, sound scenes, obviously Star Wars and stuff. But to do that, 
this is this is where I wanted to get everybody in. I wanted to talk to John and Steve about this as well, but people are dying to know. Um, I haven't even unboxed the speakers yet because I want to do this right. I am not in a hurry. And what I want to let you guys know is the process that I'm about to take. It's not just the SVSs. Okay. So uh, I have it in my notes here. Um, the other I have, I've picked out a few pairs and oh, here he is right now. Let's have him join in. There he is. How we doing, buddy? <laughs> yeah, good. Sorry about that. I didn't realize your clocks had gone. Uh, your clocks had gone forward. I know. It, well, it, yeah. Nobody <laughs> knew. I didn't. Yeah, it was just <laughs> stupidity. On I should have said something um, earlier today. I'm, I'm oh, like all. Okay. Di- I should have been like, oh, I, I didn't. It didn't even dawn on me until you said like what time it was. You're like, oh yeah, I'll be joining at three thirty, and I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so that was funny. Uh, but That's I was it. just good, good, good. I was just telling the listeners um, about my plans for my SVS speakers that I tweeted out, and nice. uh, yeah, so I'm trying to go through my plan here for everything that I'm going to do. Where's my list of new speaker choices? There they are. So first up on the docket are the SVSs. So I need to build, I need to build my speaker stands so that I can place these exactly where they would be in relation to in the new room uh, and also compare them to the speakers that I have now. So what I want to do, I'm going to build three speakers, speaker stands for the front, uh, lower one, obviously, for the center channel to go under the screen. And then I want to be able to A-B these as quickly as possible. And I've had, at first, I was going to use this switcher that I heard about on HT Guys. Uh, but now I'm thinking there might be an easier, quicker way where I just go boom, 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 and I go across the front. It'll literally take me like 40 seconds to go across the front of the room and switch out some speaker while I just pop, pop it in. And um, and then be able to really A, B and, and, you know, take in some scenes and go back and forth because what's going to happen is that we're going to have a bunch of face offs and kind of like March Madness bracket. But this is going to take a little while to do. And I also want to experience these speakers for like a month on their own, you know, to get get a feel for them. Um so my NHTs are going to go up against the SVSs. I've been dying to learn the difference in those anyways. And then whichever I prefer out of the two of those will go up against, uh, let me see. I think I have a Focal Aria 900 line on, on deck next. I think that's the one. Yes, Focal Aria 900. 900s across the front same idea bookshelves across the front uh they also have a center channel so that will be next then whichever one wins out of that will go up against the kef r3s and so these are the three that i'm looking at that from all my research and everything without hearing them obviously in my room but are pretty much kind of what i'm looking for so different price ranges. Uh, I think the Focals are relatively the same, maybe a little bit more than the SVSs. And then the Kefs are even more. They're, I think they're quite substantially more, actually. Like not double, but a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to hear the difference in all of them. And then as they go up against it, like which ones do I prefer in that, in that range and see, you know. And this is how I'm making my choice for the next theater. Right now, these will now uh, the other thing is like, okay, as I go, it's like, okay, now I'll put the SVS, say the SVS is win. I'll have to replace the NHTs in that in my system now and then go on to the next round and then go from there. Now, do I keep going in this theater with whatever, which one wins until I move? You know, I don't know. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, um but yeah, that's that's the big plan. And I, I'm not I don't want to rush it. I am super busy right now. It's like every spare moment I get. If if I can get a few minutes, I like to sit in my theater and watch stuff for the show. I like to relax a little bit. But then on top of that, um my we're trying to get my daughter's house done and I'm doing a lot of the construction for her. So running into like this whole past weekend was like get up, 
go to go to my daughter's house, work all day, and then come home. And same any off hours, I I try to go there and do that. So, um, yeah. So I don't really have a lot of time to build speaker stands and stuff yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, Johnny Speakers is saying. I was going to say the Kefs are definitely a step up in price. Uh, yeah, it's I, I I don't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say they were like fourteen hundred a piece, and then I think the SV, SVSs were like the center channel was like eight, and then I think the uh, the ones on either side are uh, they're uh, seven or vice something like the six ninety nine and then seven ninety nine is what those were. Um, but then the Kefs are a little bit, you know, they're. I don't think they're four. Maybe the center channel was fourteen hundred. I think the Kefs were the few. Well, were the one where the center channel was actually a little cheaper than the left and the right, something like that, which is unusual. Most of the time, people charge more for their center channel. So, um, but I wanted to have that little bit of a, a jump in price and see if I noticed a difference. If I noticed, like, okay, that's worth it. Let's see how that goes, because I know SVSs are supposed to be really and same with NHTs. That's why I think this is a good comparison all the way around. NHT and SVS are supposed to be um, good um, value for what you get. It's really hard to beat something like that. You'd have to go to from everything I've heard, you'd have to go to like 2000 plus to get a different to to actually beat these things out so it'll be fun it's going to be fun and um it's my new theater will have you know everything the research will have been done so and uh we're going to get to go through it i'm going to do videos on it and i'm going to do uh somebody asked me on twitter if i do if i'm going to do an unboxing and uh i don't do unboxings i i don't understand those i don't i I'm, i've never been a fan of them i i get it people like it but i i i'm not a big fan of it so i don't do unboxings um do you do you watch a lot of unboxings steve <laughs> not gen not generally um it, it, you throw the be... boxes out for god's sakes or yeah, store well, them <laughs> yeah i store them yeah it would have to be something pretty you know ve well very very special something that i'm desperate to get to watch somebody else enjoying opening it and i can't um yeah. so yeah it, it, yeah i think there's a time and a place <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it I, I never understand. I guess it's a big thing with kids. Like little kids mm. have YouTube channels that just unbox stuff and like other kids just watch it. And it's, it must be that like, I don't know, jealousy button, envy button. Mm. It's triggering for people. They're just like, oh, wow. I'm like, I just never, I'm like, watch this, everybody. And they take it out of the box and show it to you. Mm. <laughs> but like, <laughs> all right. Now, it's okay. Like, what well, you don't have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even if you do have it, you're like, yeah, it looks just like mine. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, I've seen, like, I, I've seen advertisement, not advertisement, but you scroll by them and like unboxing my new speakers or unboxing my new projector or unboxing my receiver. They all do something else other than just sit there. Right. So it's like, yeah. I mean, unboxing, if you were like, I'm going to unbox my Mona Lisa that I just bought. Well, that's a painting. That's something you can actually see that translates to video, mm. <laughs> like unboxing my speaker. Are you going to connect it? No, no, I'm just going to show it to you. I'm just going <laughs> to like, stare at it. Yeah. <laughs> I never yeah. understood that. So no, can I, can I ask you this? Cause I think, sure. I think Todd asked you as well. And, and forgive me if you've already mentioned it before I came in, can I, and just, just curious mm -hmm. why, why is it going to be floor? Um, bookshelf speakers for the new place no matter what oh. or is there any reason why no floor standards just just curious bearing in mind no, no, I've no. Got great it's a great ones. question um it's a great question because uh i actually um i i was considering i still do want um floor standing mm. but from what i understand with the with the especially with the svs they have those side firing subwoofers so okay. if it where the proximity to the wall because of my screen they're going to be so close to the wall on the sides there it wouldn't sound right and you're not going to get okay. any benefit out of that so and especially in this room where i'm going to be running four subwoofers anyways i really the only reason i want floor standing is i want the looks i just hmm. want to see those on the side but I'm really not going to be utilizing any more than what the bookshelf offers in any of these. 
right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. why spend the money? Maybe someday I'll upgrade to something on the side. I don't know, but the I, and I'm not. I, I have no issues whatsoever with bookshelves. Is there's there nobody should have an issue with bookshelves if you're running subs in your room mm -hmm. to be able to. You're gonna get the full frequency range, and you know it's just to me in my room the the floor standards it's just aesthetics it's just how cool they would look but then i'm also putting them behind a wall so there, yeah. there'd be you're not even going to see them unless i put the lights on behind the wall which i do want to be able to do and show people my speakers but um but yeah so uh there's you know uh let's see johnny speakers oh a sierra's here oh okay so sounds like fun what do you say uh Johnny Speaker says, I'd love for DJ to try some Ascend Sierra series. Yeah, what's the price on those? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And then Dan had, Dan says, I've had the SVS and the KEF, and I ended up with Arendal. Arendal? I'm pretty sure that's a character in Lord of the Rings, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you can you can go down a rabbit hole on these things endlessly, exactly. and I think eventually you're gonna you're well, you're already doing what you should be doing, which is try it yourself, see mm -hmm. what you like. If you like it, buy it. Right. That's that's you're already right. doing that. I mean, otherwise you will never decide. You know, yeah. if you because someone will always say, "I prefer that to this," and you know, we've talked about it before. You'll never ever get to where you want right. to go. <laughs> no, I know. And and that's the um Johnny Speaker says their uh the bookshelves are 1500 a pair. Well, that's not bad. The book mm. that's so that's 750 a speaker. I could do the quick math. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not bad. And that's for the Ascend Sierra. So that's not bad. That's right in the same price range. But exactly what you were saying, it's it, it's a rabbit hole. You mm. know, and that's why I'm like I've got my 3 here. You know, maybe these ascends here, but there's always somebody that can, there's always something somebody could add in to make me be like, all right, I'll try those next and I'll try the, and then you're always there. I've had my NHTs for almost 30 years. Can you believe that? Since like 95. So we're coming up on 30 years. I've had these things and they'll still be, um, I, I changed the fronts just recently to the C series. But before that I had the super ones, which are the larger version. Um, and when I, in my first theater, I had, um, not my first theater, but my first projector, I had an acoustically transparent screen and I had, and we talked about this online. I had three of the exact same speakers all the way across. And they were, um, the, um, the super ones st stacked vertically behind the screen and that's that was my three my center my front stage then when i went with a, a standard screen i had to get the nhc center channel but it wasn't the c series it was uh, the step down from that and then i upgraded from there so it's uh yeah it's um NHTs has been for a long, long time. Mm. So this this should be fun. And it's, you know, you're gonna have to, I mean, in my house, the NHTs are king. So you get you're gonna you gotta come in and if you're gonna knock off the champion, you gotta you gotta come in with something good. So we'll see if SVS <laughs> is up to the task. <laughs> uh, it's likely to be, isn't it? It's gotta be, surely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I hope so. I mean they're not they're they're very similar. They have a few differences to them. Uh but they even look the same. They they mm -hmm. have the similar like the C series, they even have the um the, the the they're not perfectly square. They have the shaved corners on the front. Um mm -hmm. they have gloss black. I I got the same. So um I don't know maybe I'm sure once I do the videos and stuff, I'll have the comparison of them. But, um, but they're very similar in size. They're very similar. And uh, I think, I think the SVSs have an aluminum, aluminum, as you would say. Yes, thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can speak your language. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think they You're have correcting the yourself before I do it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the um yeah the SVSs have the aluminum dome tweeter, and uh. uh NHTs don't. They I I, oh, okay. I I can't remember what 
what it is, but it's not aluminium or aluminum. So um it's um i mean you know you're talking to the right person if you're talking about you know you want them all to look the same aesthetically yeah. pleasing i mean you know i I couldn't have anything else yeah. um you know all mine are identical apart from the center which is just the bigger version of all the others um, all right and i you know um and again you know there's me saying about floor standards mine are on the wall you know all all of mine are up on the walls and yet i yeah. you know I, I they sound great although they're meant to be on the wall to be fair so they're the way that they are set and designed is to go on the wall. Right, um, right. So, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I get that. And you're putting them into the wall, aren't you? You're going to recess them or put them behind the wall in the new yes. place, aren't you? Including the rears and the surrounds? Mm -hmm. Oh, the rears mm -hmm. will definitely be hidden because that's got mm -hmm. a two-foot uh, false wall in the back as well. Okay, so a little, um, little hole for them and they'll go flush not to even, the wall? Not even. It's going okay. to be the – so the, the front wall and the back wall are going to be a, all um, speaker cloth. Mm -hmm. Front and rear, okay, false wall, and then everything will go behind that. So I'll have subs back there on the front and the rear. I'll have I'll be able to I'll be able to set my speakers wherever I want back there. It's going to be a two foot uh, gap between the the actual wall and then this wall. So I'll be able to put anything I want back there and place it accordingly. And then on the side walls, yes, they will be recessed within the wall, also behind speaker cloth, and then those will also be all filled with insulation for mm -hmm. sound dampening and area sound absorption for within the room. But it's so um, I'm narrowing down the room, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Getting closer and closer to what I'm going to have actually have to work with for a, a size, and uh, so I'm able to to design that. And now it's just the depth that I'll be able to use on the sides and do I have to pop it out a little bit more where the speakers are and stuff like that. So yeah, I've got so some ideas, yeah. but it's fun. It's fun. But yes, yeah. I, well, I, lo I love the stealth yeah. look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, it's, it's cool when the lights are out, it's all just going to be black and that, yeah, you know, it's just going to be the screen, which again is what I like in mind. I love when you turn the lights out, that's it. It's gone. You've just got the screen and you, and you can just lose yourself in that image, which is what's so uh, so cool about it. So yeah, it sounds great. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Um, Carl is saying hello, by the way, and thing from uh, he's in line in the, at South by Southwest for a Cheech Martin interview. <laughs> Carl, oh, so, that hasn't shown up on my. Uh, Carl, yeah, yeah. At eight thirty-five, uh, my time, not your time. Yeah. Um, they said we're listening whilst in line for a Cheech Martin interview. Say hi to Cheech. Oh, there first, it is. Carl. Yeah, there we go. I found it. We are listening. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's funny yep. yeah that's it so say hi to him for us <laughs> there you go uh all right so that's that's the svs update um i know everybody's really looking forward to what i am about you know what i'm about to get into and they, and it's that's one of the things that i wanted to say too it's it's funny is um it's that people always are just like what do you think? What do you think? Because they have them, or they. It's like, mm. am I right in having them too? Yes, yes. And it's like, it's like, you know, or if even if I don't like them, right? What is that? What what's going to happen? Are people going to be like, oh no, 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 no. Everybody's different. Everybody's. Don't worry about it. There's that's why there's so many different speaker brands out there. Everybody's ear is different. Everybody's room acoustics are different. Um, there there's no right or wrong answer, but it's just funny that it's like, oh, okay, whew, I'm right. I got all right. I just want to make sure I'm right too. <laughs> there is an entire industry based around that DJ oh, in fact, industries. I think just about any aspirational industry has mm -hmm. that, doesn't that, you know, whether it's the new car, the new, you know, whatever it might be, if it's a, if it's a consumer product, the idea of is mine good, you know, do other people right. feel that my purchase is validated or, or validate my purchase? So right. yeah, it, you know, it, it's how it is. It's just human nature. It is. <laughs> it is. Cause we're, I mean, we're creatures of habit, but we're also, we're pack animals. Right. Mm. Like that's why we get along so well with dogs and they we're pack animals. So we the pack needs to uh, we we need to be appreciated by the pack. Right. And it's like if mm. I'm doing so up oh, here we go. Here yeah, we sorry, go. Just, John coming in. I think so. I don't have an image. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Hey, John. We are live. I just got to let are. you know that right up front. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know how you can be. <laughs> I mean, you could just throw me in the deep end and teach me, let me learn how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We've so, John, what do before. you think about that? 
I think <laughs> what you said was dead on, and what DJ said was crazy. <laughs> oh, he's accurate. He has been listening. <laughs> <laughs> was that right? Yeah, yeah, go. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, well, perfect timing. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> so let me. I didn't know when we were going. That's what to I'm be- known for. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's not what I heard. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I'm talking to my wife. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Where I'm, tr- I'm looking for. Oh, man. There we go. All right, let's get to this. We all have the attire on. All right. First yep, and yep, foremost, yep. like this, this has been a long time coming. It has. What, what's it been like? Two months? Oh, at least six more weeks. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been a while, weeks. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so tell me, DJ, who are you wearing this evening? <laughs> I, my tailor. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah wearing, ooh, but a Hugh Grant. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember his name. Can't remember his name, but <laughs> I'm wearing Danny speakers. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the uh, let's uh, let's pull that up right here. We can pull it up on the um, on the stream here, so you can check it out. This is our you. This is our T Public page, and if you go to our T Public page, you'll notice right here. There's BSHT and a bunch of quotes. We'll click on it in a minute, and it says right down here, Danny Speaker's T-shirt. And then when you click on it. Okay, there you go. So you can see that. And then say, I can, now we'll get closer on that. BSHT, quote, you pulled the pin, end quote. And these are all quotes, actually. It's like listening to paint dry in Dolby Digital, only the bright side, three guys sitting on the on the bus bench, ask me about home theater, the, the sights, the sounds, the scenes, and then our logo. So everything you see here, Danny came up with all by himself. Dan came up with by himself. Uh, I added the logo on the bottom. Uh, Dan made these, sent one to John, sent two to me. There's still one on the way to Steve. <laughs> we don't know where that is. Um, in the meantime, I asked him, I said, Dan, can I can I put these on T Public? So I put them on T Public. Uh, Basically, I just duplicated it and then um, added the logo at the bottom, which works perfect because he put these in order. And then at the end, it says the sights, the sounds, the scenes, and then the logo, Brightside Home Theater. So we got BSHT T-shirts. Um, he went, I mean, the work he did for this is amazing. We were all blown away. Um, and John was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Are we telling that story? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start off by saying I'm very flattered that everybody seems to think I can wear an extra large <laughs> because <laughs> I'm a little bit bigger than that. You didn't so, have to say that. <laughs> well, I'm telling the story. So, okay. yeah, Danny was kind enough to send a, a shirt and it was a little snug um, on me. And so I kind of reached my hands up inside of it to try to just stretch it out a little bit because it wasn't it wasn't bad but it was just a little tight i was like well maybe if i can just loosen it up a little bit and i pushed my hand right through it (laughs) so um it was either tighter than i thought or i ate my spinach that morning i don't know what happened um i put a giant hole in it so i texted dj i was like well (laughs) we're out of luck on these shirts because um yeah I've i've ruined mine so um, that's okay. I had this, I mean, I said to you right away, this is what I was doing. So yeah. we, we knew that. And uh, I was like, I'll just send you another one. So I sent you this one. Um, so we all have them on today. And as you see, you go on the website, you can get the sweatshirts, you can get the stickers for this. You can get obviously a t-shirt. Um, but yeah, it's, um, really cool. And then obviously you could see we have other things. We have just the regular logo. You can pick your colors. You can do all of this stuff. But but the other thing I wanted to let everybody know is I think I'm hoping Danny started a trend with this. Uh, I would love, I mean, more. And everybody else will send us free T-shirts? <laughs> no, you don't have to send me a free T-shirt. Just break. Send, just yeah, for me to me, break. Yeah. <laughs> two, two X, guys, two X. The beauty is you don't have to send me a T-shirt. You could just send me the design and then send me an idea, send me a design, and 
we'll make it up and I'll just throw it up here and we'll, and it'll have your name on it. So this is the Danny speakers t-shirt. You can, like I said, you go there, you click on it. There you go. And then you can choose your color if you want it in red. There you go. So, um, but yeah, you, I, I always put everything in blue. That's what I prefer, but you guys can choose whatever you want. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I know Johnny speakers and, and, um, um, Oh man. <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike Schramm, Johnny speakers and Mike Schramm are going to, I forget the name of the, the, the place they're going. They were there last year. Johnny speakers wore his bright side shirt and he was spotted by uh, SVS. <laughs> and they were like, Hey, we know them. And so you can get, you can actually get recognized by wearing these out in public yeah. now. So that's kind of fun. So, uh, yeah. Anybody wants to design something, we'll put it up on the website and um, that'll be, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. So thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Sorry. It took so long for us to get this on air because he did this. Uh, he did it around Christmas time. We got them shortly after Christmas, something like that. Right. Beginning of the year. Mine arrived today. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, and we texted, we tweeted about it. I literally texted you. Cause I'm like, yeah. Hey, have you seen anything yet? I didn't know if it could. And then mm. you literally, and then I saw your tweet later. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even seen the text from you yet. And, uh, but yeah, so just showed up. So we're all wearing them today and, uh, pretty excited that's about very it. cool very yeah. cool yeah no, that's awesome yeah thanks uh thanks danny it's very cool yeah so if you are a budding fashionista and you want your own fashion label now's your chance isn't it really yep yeah you can end up on t public with your with your name under your design so there you go <laughs> so sounds like fun all right we are all over the place today uh running behind did you hit john did you hear why we ended up behind with uh I steve hear? Steve, well, no. I, I forgot. I mean, to tell I saw him. the text about the time change. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, so I was yeah, trying I to know. drive home. Yeah, I was trying to get home from work. But the, I, I, yeah, like, I thought we changed first. I thought we went first, then you guys. So yeah. I didn't even think. When about do you it. change? Because we got to get that week, right. Last Sunday of the month. Okay. of this month oh, so it's 30th okay. of march whatever it is around we that used time. to be that way but we've uh we've since it was a few years ago we sped it up we mm. shortened the gap uh between november and march i think we moved it and tighter or something whatever <clears throat> but yeah we're well, off I don't, now i don't mind starting early is all good i'm in court tomorrow so it's uh <laughs> it's right all well good. I still have to be done because I have a hockey meeting tonight at seven, my mm. time. So I still have to be done on time. So mm. we need to cook this along. So let's get to uh Patreon supporter of the week, Brent Jones, two months. Thank you very much. Uh, no new patrons, no new donations this week, still standing strong at $163 for the month. And we will be giving to uh, Haymakers for Hope, Brian Curtis, raising money to fight childhood cancer. So uh, I haven't checked in on on his amount yet but we will be donating our hundred dollars at the end of the month to him so uh let's see let's do some quick giveaways here let me pull that up uh Deesh, we... did anyone did anyone claim the cubes uh brock stars cubes oh yeah oh yeah oh i'm sorry you're right yeah uh, we didn't announce that um uh yeah mike schramm did next <laughs> next morning he's like did anybody claim those yet and i was like nope not yet. Uh, so he grabbed them and uh, I believe they are on their way. Uh, I haven't, I don't know what the total is, but you know, uh, John's paying for the shipping and then Mike's going to make the uh, equivalent donation to us. So that will go towards the monthly total as well. But yeah, John's donating them and paying for the shipping. That way we can benefit from, from the, uh, the donation completely. So really, uh, Really nice of them to do that. So, but yeah, Mike Schramm should be getting those uh, momentarily, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully they go a little quicker than these t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not going to England, so you're all good. You can rely on the Royal Very true. Bloody Mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll know. Uh, do you know what? I'll know what happened to the other shirt if he turns up and he's wearing the same one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We have for donation, uh, no donation. Sorry. Uh, new, giveaways. um, yeah, sorry. Giveaways. Buddy, we're doing sorry, yep. mate. I, I oh, no, 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 no problem. These are giveaways <laughs> as well. Uh, we have, uh, all given from Mark Hader. We have Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl, 
Star Trek, the motion picture, the director's edition, the newest one, and Fantastic Beast and the Secrets of Dumbledore, all to be given. And uh, last week, we gave away Hunt for October, The War of the Worlds, uh, the newest one, uh, Ambulance, The Batman, and Maverick. So uh, we still have all of those available. Uh, among, Don't yep. you mean the Oscar-winning Maverick, Deej? Well, we're going to get to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get to that right away here. Um, and then we'll get into t some tweaks. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do some Oscar talk. Uh, I thought I had some graphics for that, but I don't. Um, I thought you'd have a, a sort of sounder of someone being slapped. <laughs> no, <laughs> I could slap myself. I've done that. Don't before. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so were you, did anything surprise you here in, in like the big ones that we were talking about? Mm, not for me. I don't think, I mean, I, I think I was a bit surprised that everything everywhere all at once swept the awards as much as they did. Yeah. You know, I could say, I mean, the, the best supporting actor. I mean, that was key. I all day long. Did you see the picture by the way of him? Uh, when they were young and did, did you see that one yeah. tell me that didn't bring a tear to your eye oh my god it it, oh my listening gosh. to his acceptance it was <laughs> and, and jamie lee curtis's as well her <laughs> acceptance and for her parents and everything i was like oh and i was watching it the next morning i'm like wow that was and i thought i thought it was great that she got it you know and it didn't in a way, it surprised me, but it didn't surprise me because it was it is an amazing performance. Mm. It's just we're not used to seeing that performance winning, right? That crazy yeah. over the top performance winning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With the picture, did you see the picture though from Temple of Doom with it with short round cuddling Indy, and then mm -hmm. underneath it's the picture of them cuddling. I mean, that was beautiful. And then there was a tweet that had that picture, and then it said, "You took the long way round, short round." <laughs> you know, just oh, what a lovely, just what a lovely picture. Yeah. It was great, but yeah. So I wasn't surprised with best supporting actor was nailed on that all day long. He was going to win that um, supporting actress again. Michelle Yeoh. It's her time. She, 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 she. Sorry, she was actress, wasn't she? She supporting was actress. actress. Was Jamie Lee Curtis? Mm -hmm. And again, you know, both of them well deserved and really good. So I, I had no issues, no, no surprises with that. But I'm a bit surprised, not because I don't think it's worthy, but I'm a bit surprised of the best picture and best director as well. I was a bit surprised at that um i thought that was going to be all quiet on the western front all day long and again not because i don't think it's deserved just because i was surprised right. that 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 they that they went because it is a very quirky film um, it is and, and, it's and so our wondered, type of film and we're mm. not used to seeing those and that's what i tweeted out today that i i loved the idea when they added to, they went to 10 for best picture mm. because it was to get more of the blockbusters in there to get people more hopeful. <clears throat> but when they did it, we really didn't think our types of movies were going to have a chance. We knew it was a, a publicity or we thought it was a publicity stunt, but is it really, is it working? Because maybe this movie wouldn't have been nominated 10 years ago. Or whenever they didn't, you know, I, I can't remember how long ago they they upped it. Mm. But you know what I mean? It's like it's opening people's eyes. It's opening people's perspectives on, hey, you know, and that's why I think he got best director. It's like, can you, it's one thing, I, I get it. You, you make an epic like uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. But how do you direct a crazy movie with the special effects, with the everything that goes on directing a movie like that? That that is an amazing job, mm. you know. Well, you know how you get two of you to do it. <laughs> That's True. how you do it. You don't have one of you. You have two Daniels. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, the Russo brothers, and yeah, same yeah. idea. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I think, like you said, we all think it's worthy of winning, but mm. we're surprised it won because we're not used to our movies getting those, mm. you know. And and I. I'm hoping it's a sign of things to come, you know, more movies like this get. Yeah. Although this is so offbeat and unusual, I'm not sure I want to now see a lot of qu qu quirky clones. I think I'd, this is so unique. It's a, it's a lovely little jewel that I quite like as it is. And then seeing lots of people imitating that would be a problem. So I, cause quirk, I, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I'd be curious about <clears> your view as well, John, in terms of quirky films for me are either love or hate. 
And I think sometimes that if you, it's just quirky for the sake of it, it becomes irritating very quickly. Whereas I think in this, this was, this was done with a, with a, with a story purpose in mind. Um, and with the, with the, with the narrative in mind, if that makes sense. Um, so, so I, I wouldn't want to see a lot of films like this now coming out because I want this to, you know, be as it is. So it'll be interesting to see next year whether they go more conservative. I know that's a loaded term. I don't mean it that way. No, no, no. In a more, in a more um, <clears throat> traditional, shall we say? That's probably a better word, isn't it? A more <laughs> traditional type of movie. You know, an epic, a, 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 a low key drama. You know, something like that. Will they do that next year as a response to this or not? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it was but all, but very well deserved. Have you seen it yet, John? I, I, I haven't I don't seen, think it. seen no, it. No, I still I still haven't seen it. Um, are, you, are you intending to, or is it I, I, eventually sort of- when I can pick it up? But um, I'm not watching <laughs> a lot of anything right at the moment. Oh, man. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I haven't seen it, and I like I'm not really your guy here because I couldn't be less interested in the Oscars or <laughs> award ceremonies or any. Like I know who won because I don't live under a rock, and like <laughs> like you can't help but know who won, right? But like I didn't watch the show, <laughs> I didn't have any. I, like I don't know, I'm not an award show guy. Um, I haven't seen that. I still wa- really want to see the movie, um, not because it won Best Picture. I mean, I've wanted to see it regardless, um, but like I don't even know all the other nominees that it was up against, and I still hadn't seen. I think when we talked about the nominations a few weeks ago, I had only seen three out of the ten movies. And I've still only seen three out of the 10 movies. Mm. So I, I don't have a lot of comparison or like mm. opinion on which one should have won because I didn't see most of them. So right. um, some of them I will see. Some of them I don't – I still probably won't ever watch. Like I don't know that I'll watch Women Talking or um, – No. Um, Tar no. or some of those other movies. You know, I probably will never see them. But uh, Jen and I were going to watch Tar. She wants to see it. So yeah. we were, mm. we would. I think that was the, the women talking was the other one that I, I didn't think I was going to see. I haven't seen yet. And honestly, I've I don't know anything about that. I don't know what that's about. Like Maybe. I might like it. Right. It's not the title that, but like, I have no problem with women talking, so don't cancel me. But like, I don't know anything <laughs> about it. Like, I don't know what it's right. about. It, um, <laughs> and so I have no desire to see it because I've never even heard of it. <laughs> so. I was going to say, guys, look, we should all know by now, right? We've all got significant others. When women right. are talking, we are listening. Exactly. Yeah. Simple as that. <laughs> all right. Exactly. <laughs> what is that um, line from yeah. Frazier? I'm listening. Yeah. Yes. Well, quite. Yeah. I'm that's it. Um, yeah. it was so, yeah, I, I, I was a little bit un- unhappy that um, Puss in Boots didn't win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. I was annoyed at that. I was hoping that would win. I didn't think it would, but I was hoping it would. What did it's still win my favorite that? animated film. Um, Pinocchio. Uh, Pinocchio. The, the, yeah, the Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro, oh, yeah. which is, you know, great, fine. I mean, which I did a, see. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, rumor, I haven't seen it. Cause it's not really my kind of film as such, really. Um, I'm, I don't particularly like the story of Pinocchio. I find it a bit unsettling um oh, well just personally and so and, 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 <laughs> yeah and Guillermo del Toro's version here. is going to be even yeah. more so right <laughs> so you know I, so fair enough but I I would have liked Puss in Boots to win it because that is a film I'd like to see more of in that kind of way you know that way of, of telling the film but you know it might just be me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um That's and it followed the BAFTAs actually. It, the 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 that won the BAFTA for best animated film as well. So it you know it it it, it was going to happen. Um but yeah, no generally it was fine and then Maverick of course got best sound, rightly so. Yeah. Um I don't think we're any of us are going to be complaining about that. No. Um what was cinematography? Was that everything everywhere as All well? All quiet. Oh, of course it was. Which of makes course. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. I, before I even found out, I was like, oh, I've, I'm hoping and I figured All Quiet would win that one. Mm. Um, but yeah, so at least it got that. Um, and I thought, it, I mean, after seeing that, you know, like, it, it I, I figured that one would get it all along. Um, mm. For oh, there are some shots in that that are just stunning. You yeah, know, the, be- I'm. Uh, I, I can't wait for the 4K disc. You know, we're actually getting one, aren't we? So, yeah. um, you know, um, hopefully the start of some other Netflix stuff coming soon, which would be nice. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so looking forward to seeing that again on disc. That'll be a day one purchase for me. I can't wait for that. 
Yeah. Um, it's only next month. And you guys might get that end of this month, I think it is, isn't it? We get it in April, I think. Fairly mm. soon. Yeah. 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 Be but good. it's funny because that's another one that's like when Schindler's List came out. Oh, I can't wait to get that. I can't wait to get that. And then you're like, okay, put it on the shelf. Because they're, they're both difficult watches. Right. Mm. It's like, it's not like you're like, all right, let's sit down and en- you don't Get sit popcorn, down and kids. enjoy this. <laughs> it's like, right. I mean, they're yeah. great films and great cinematography, but it's not like you're like, all right, get my popcorn out. <laughs> like, no. Nope. Let's say, uh, yeah, let's go to, uh, you know, World War One. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm so I'm, but I am looking forward to, to watching it again in, and, you know, in, in a non compressed way. Um, so yeah, I, I think it was good. I mean, I didn't watch the show. The show, of course, here is in the middle of the night. So we, you know, we, yeah. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Um, I, I just watched the, the, you know, the interesting highlights of the next day. Um, but yeah, for me, the moment was definitely the Key Kai Kwan and, uh, and Harrison Ford, uh, is very cool. So that was a nice uh, for 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 us of a certain age. That's a, you know, yeah. a very cool thing indeed. I like uh, I do like the awards though. I do like the Oscars. In the past, I, I tweeted out today that I have had watch parties. I've had people over. We've watched them in the theater. Made an event out of it. Um, I have in you know going back to the you know late eighties, early nineties. I used to it used to be a big deal to stay up and watch it when I was a kid, and then when I was out on my own we used to watch it and i i did pay attention to a lot of the uh even when it was what was it four or five that they only nominated for best picture and i i always tried to see as many as possible but i loved the technical ones just because of home theater and i've always tried to follow like best sound and stuff and i've gotten away from it watching the show the last few years i uh, just been too busy and I'm hoping, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to that and actually having and making an event and sitting down and watching them each year, uh, because I, I do I do enjoy them different, you know, different from John, but I do I do enjoy them. So how far into the performance of Natu Natu from RRR did you think I would just couldn't carry on with that? I'd be absolutely out cold. <laughs> did I didn't you wh- see that. No. Yeah, they did that. You know, obviously the the the, the big dance number in RRR, yeah, yeah. the one thing. Mm-hmm. So they uh, they did that on stage, and uh, oh. it just just looked. I mean, ten seconds in, you're thinking, yeah, my back would have gone there, but I pulled the muscle <laughs> there. There's no, you know, notice no, interesting. The, the actors, the actors were not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so they they weren't about to try it. But oh. yeah, they did the full the full number. You know, it's just like, oh my goodness. Wow. Um wow. so it was um yeah, it was uh it was it was interesting. Which is to see. odd because it was not nominated for anything. Yes, it was. Right? It won best song. It won best song. Oh, did it? Song. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought yeah, I thought yeah. it wasn't it was the nominated only thing. for anything. It was the only thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, it should have been nominated. We talked about well, it. It should, it should have, have been sure. nominated yeah. for other stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, that that would have been. And we talk about quirky films. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate definitely. Uh, now, I I say that quirky to that, us, that, but not really exactly to all there. Exactly. Culturally, right? You know, not not having had exposure to the culture, it's quirky to us. Um, but uh, so so yeah, but that would have been a you know a worthy winner as well for something that yeah. just just was completely different to anything we'd seen before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was good, and no one got slapped this year, so it's all good news. <laughs> um, so whilst there was a bit less controversy, um, it was uh, I think from what I saw, it was a you know it was a good ceremony. Although I do feel sorry for the poor sod who was sat behind the woman with the big veil. Did you see that? I the saw. Lady no, sat in the her, yeah. I mean, I. Tell me what would you have done, guys? Right, here we go. This is well, this is revealing now. So you've got your ticket to the Oscars, fellas. Something you've always wanted. Maybe not you, John, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Something you've always wanted, right? It's your one time. You sit down. You've got your popcorn, posh popcorn, obviously. You sit down. You've got your posh drink as well. You know, it's all good. And then along comes someone who sits in front of you with that veil and you can't see anything. Right, there we go. Pop quiz, hot shots. What do you do? Well, Shoot the I hostage. Mean, it's not, I don't know. Was it removable? Is the question? Because I, I don't well, know. I think I, there. I mean, it, it, it looks well, like she I didn't know. move it. Would you have said no? But I'm saying it's not like a hat. Was it a hat that she could? It wasn't something she could take off, though, right? Like it was. I, 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 don't, I don't know because I, I definitely. I think I would have definitely given her a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> I've done it. He was going with a I've, double tap. I've done it at yeah. the movie theaters where I've asked people to take off a hat or something. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, I don't know you, if it was something that she could remove, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it also depends on in a situation like that, who's the person with the hat and who's seated behind him? Because that's all like, 
you don't you're not just it's not like open seating and it's you're all mm-hmm. placed that the person behind them is probably like do you know who i you know they, they're they're probably well, and that was the thing too is she like a was she just a like a I guest or was she like an actor like was she yeah, but she could be anybody i mean well right but i guess you know. my question is like was it tom cruise sitting behind her even though i know he didn't show up <laughs> no, you he know what i'm saying on a, on a on a you know what right. on he a, was on standing a on a milk chair. box but <laughs> yeah. but like what i'm saying is like i don't know if they were all celebrities in that section of the right. audience or if they were just like yeah. quote unquote normal people or uh, who they does, were does but, it matter though I mean, not to me, but Spielberg himself, (laughs) and he decided he was going to work. Wouldn't you be like, "Look, hello, Mr. Spielberg, get the bloody hat off, or else, sunshine." Right. You know, uh, then you'll be phoning home. You know, it it, it just (laughs) thinking like this. You know, what do you just sit there and just let it happen, or would you say something? You know, I just, I'd, I'd like to think that I'd be like, "Oi." (laughs) <laughs> I think I say so, I say something. I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure I would because I've done it before. Head, <laughs> I can see the headlines the next day. Jason Statham shouts it I don't in front yeah. of him at Ascot. I mean, I might get slapped. Maybe it's you know <laughs> right. I don't know. I Maybe don't know. Like it Will depends on who the person I know, is. I don't know. I don't know what I would do because I I, I know I'd look at myself if I am at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Like, why am I there? And now I'll be like, you got a free ticket. Okay. That's why I'm there. Right. And now I, and then I sit down, I'm like, oh man, why am I here? Oh, this Mm. is awesome. I'm at the Oscars. And then in comes the Pope (laughs) with a hat on or something. And I'm like, I can't see. I'll be like, oh, that's why I'm here. I'm a seat filler. (laughs) That's it. You know what I mean? Like that's Mm. the only way I'm going to be there. I think that's the yeah. only way any of us is going to be there. Well, right. But I guess and we're th- assuming we're there because we have a reason to be there. Not, you know, we're in a hypothetical world. Well, you asked world, what I would right? do. Why yeah. am I there? I mean, Brightside Home Theater. What's my motivation? Getting, yeah. You know, Oscar passes. <laughs> you know, you know, you've got as much of a right to be there as anybody else, surely. Right. I mean, you know, it's, you, they're not. I, mean, you, uh, that's look, I had a school true. report once, a report card, <laughs> you guys would say. I had a school report once that my teacher said to me that I take authority at face value would be a perfect lawyer. Right. I, right. Thought, I wondered for a long time what that meant, but I think that means I just don't necessarily put people on a pedestal and then just think, well, you've got to do what they tell you to do. And so, so I think with someone like that, I, I don't think I'd care who she was or what she was doing there. I'd like to think I'd be like, look, you're going to need to take that off because I can't see and it's not good enough. Right. But, but you're assuming know, but you're know. all equals. And to what you, to your well, we point, are. well, we are well, all equals. Not necessarily. Though. Not if we all have two for, legs and we all put our pants on one leg at a time. Yes. Right? But if we're you all are equals, <laughs> but if you were invited there for free hmm. and this person is a star, you are and not all Do you think she equals. paid to be there? She was there for free too. No, but she's the, <laughs> she's the attraction, not you. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not. Again, I'm still a bit like, well, you can be in yeah. the attraction. Just take the stupid thing off your head, right? <laughs> and You're you not can leave. You to leave. You don't you could leave. Go. Well, yeah, but then you know why should you? Because someone decides to be awkward. I, at what saying. point do we stop that? Then what if we get a hat that's bigger, three, four, five times as big, so five people behind you can't see? Is that all right? I, why are you going to? Go? The, I don't know. I don't. You asked me why. <laughs> what I would do? I'm like, well, if I'm there, I'm there for free because I'm not paying to go to the Oscars. And if somebody <laughs> invites me, it's going to be on a whim, and I'll be like, holy crap! I'll be excited. I'm even there. You guys are looking at it like you paid your ticket, just like like. <laughs> In John's example at the movies, you both paid the same. Hmm. Yeah, that's wrong. But if you're there for free, who knows what this person is? I don't know. I'd ask. I might be like, what, who are you? I, can we do something <laughs> about this? And if they said no, I'd be like, okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, we know what the answer is. The answer is take a little portable projector and then just project the show onto the right. back of a veil. Yeah, there you go. The, it'll be like looking right through her. Watch it on my phone. Who are you kidding, Live Steve? You'll it. just be watching it on your phone. Yeah, well, obviously. Like- <laughs> <laughs> iPad. Yeah. Yeah, can you hold this, love? Just behind oh. your head, please, so I can watch it. But yeah. anyway, sorry. No, <laughs> I, no. Do, I do appreciate I derail these conversations sometimes. And <laughs> um, Mike says, it, Mike, have you seen that in the chat? Mike saying, I'd be sitting quietly. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Yeah. Come on, you use some of that physical education teacher shouting stuff. Come on. I'm sure you could uh, assert your authority. Surely he'd be wearing his whistle. Yeah. Just tell her to do 50 laps, <laughs> right. you know, do, do 50 push ups, and then just watch it while she's doing that. Oh. <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's, let's do something fun. Uh, I wanted to try this out. I saw this on 
I saw this on Twitter today and I wanted to see if I could pull it up here. And I tweeted about it and I thought it was, it was so cool. So let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, share screen. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now, watch. Uh, where did it go? Oh, share. There it is. So this is the, uh, the Kaleidoscape just put out this new video. I think this is it. Is this? It? Yeah. Kaleidoscape elevates every component of your media system. Kaleidoscape's so lossless a, audio makes your processor, amplifiers, Have you and guys speakers seen this? sound the way the director no. intended. No. The dialogue is clearer room. and every subtle sound and, and rumble. I was oh, let me back that up a sec. What I thought was cool is I'm watching this and I got like all of these like chills because I was like, this is what I, what I used to do. It's like, look at where the speakers are in the room here, if you can see my pointer. But you got the overheads in here, you got the ones on the wall, and they're like showing you the glowing version of them because they're inset in the room. But I was just like, I'm watching this. And I was like, this is what I used to, I used to watch these videos or not even these videos, they were ads. And it would be like, this is what you could have. And then I think there's one later on. There's another one coming And Rumble too. draws you uh, deeper. This right here. Mm. Look at that theater right there. Kaleidoscape's... Right. Oh, let me pause that back that pad. <laughs> now, that, that's like a page out of an ad, right? And you mm -hmm. look at that and it's like, where are the speakers? And that's where I used to... That, that's where I got my ideas for what I'm what I want now or what I have now is like speakers behind the wall. Like look here, you can't see any, I don't know if that's acoustically transparent screen or if the speakers are back here on the sides like that, but you could see a speaker up here in the overhead. Look how close this front row is. This is kind of like my, th that's not the prime seating. I don't think I would say it was back mm -hmm. here. Cause that's pretty close to the front, but then you have, I mean, sound absorption on the side, but I was just watching this video. I watched it a few times and I was like, this is, it, it just reminded me of going through the magazines and checking out all that stuff. And just every time I saw that stuff, I'd be like, pull different ideas. I was, I'm not a big fan of this, the Starfield overhead in my mm -hmm. own theater, because I'm like, it's, I, I've seen people, we've hosted people that uh, on HT tours, somebody made one by them on, on their own. It's amazing looking, mm. but then you have to turn it out and you spend most of your time in the room with it out. And I'm like, that's a lot of work, but they do see, look yeah. nice. I, I quite like it. But then remember I said to you ages ago about when I went to see Empire Strikes Back and I was very young and this old cinema that I saw it in, in New Zealand, that's how long ago it was, had this star field in the ceiling. And I never forgot that. And when I mm -hmm. came to have this one installed, I did say to them, can we do a star field? But they're like, well, you can, but it then drops the ceiling. So you've then got to bring it down and that can then have impact. Because um, I quite wanted to have a star field, but with a constellation that's only visible in New Zealand. Uh, up oh. in the thing, mixed in with everything else, but just have that yeah. there, and then I'd know it was there. Um, but it was like we can, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we didn't do it. So, but at some point, it would be quite nice to have it. But with that, as I say, with that <clears throat> constellation, something that is unique, not just you know slot in panels. Um, yeah. But that uh, you know that does uh, does uh, have a cost attached to it. Um, Paul uh, Paul Hurt in chat says that family have my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're looking at the wrong stuff there, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, a husky. Yeah. Looks like a husky. Yeah, my yeah. that's the, that's the dog I wanted, a black and white husky, <laughs> and I got a red and white husky. I want a black and white male, and I got a red and white female. So oh, here, let me pull it up. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there yeah, that's it. There you go. So. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know why that just struck me. And I was like, that, that, it was really, really cool. Just watching that video through and watching it over. And I'm like, oh. and I'm, it's probably cause I'm in the middle of doing all that now and coming up with ideas and oh, carpet on the walls. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> so, all right. We're we ready to be get... walking all over it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, we ready to get, I got a pretty fun tweak of the week to go along. Well, it was from last week, as a matter of fact, hmm. So, uh, let's see, tweak of the week. I got to get to our brand here. Are we ready for, here we go. Let 
Nice. All right. Uh, first up for our tweak of the week. So I did more tweaking this uh, a couple weeks ago, talking about uh, with the projector. Okay. And in the middle of it, uh, Mike Schramm asked me a question, which will uh, Mike's on the show next Tuesday. We've already recorded it, had a great conversation. But he asked me a question about the Lumigen and does that, you know, level the playing field for, for everything. He said, uh, Steve said that you weren't impressed with Puss in Boots. And I thought the video mainly HDR was excellent. Very similar to watching Finding Nemo back in the day. The color and detail went up a notch. My question is, does your Lumigen make everything look like this? So you're used to it now. And, uh, John and I actually talked about this, uh, last week and it's, it's a great question because there's many answers to it and I don't want to get too much into it today because that's what, that's what Mike and I talk about next Tuesday. It's it's a great conversation, but it's a great question because it's like, I was thinking it rising tide raises all boats, but at the same time, there's more room for improvement and lesser, you know, non HDR content. So we get into that. Um, but, when he asked this, I was in the middle of, you know, just messing with my projector settings and messing with some stuff. And, you know, this was a few weeks ago. And one of the things I noticed is, remember I said a while ago that I like to, I have a setting film one where I actually put on the, uh, the black enhancements and I put on the motion and stuff just for when I'm watching streaming and I think something doesn't look right. I can, it, it's, it's calibrated exactly the same, but then I add on the enhancements and then I came across this <clears throat> and it's a star Wars scene. Go figure star Wars, a new hope. And it's, so it's timestamp on it. It's this scene here at 54 minutes and 26 seconds. And it's when they're going into meet that I think they're finally going to go in and meet uh, and see the, uh, the Falcon for the first time. Okay. So they're just about, you can see them in the background. So here, it, here's the scene and yeah. you can see them in the background here and they're just about to go in. So this is obviously the edited version. Uh, the new version. All right. 4K. So here, this is, this is the scene at reference level that I'm showing you right now on the, on the video stream. And basically you see, do you know, did, do either of you know the name of this character? Garen Dan. Oh, you do. Oh, pretty cool. Okay. So he's in all black. Right. And it's a very dark, very dark scene. So what you can see here is like up at the top, you can see some uh, shadowing and stuff on him. And the black level here is, is really good. This is reference taken. Now I set my this is taken with my iPhone. I'm not expect. I'm not trying to show you, you know, HDR or anything like that. But what I am going to show you is the difference when you turn on the contrast enhancement. And on my projector, I ha- it's called contrast enhancement. It increases your black level for you. And what ends up, and I had it on medium. So when I went to film mode, and again, my, my, my iPhone was locked. So whatever setting, whatever, this is the aperture and everything is, is locked. Now here's the picture of it with contrast enhancement. And do you see the difference? Can you guys see the difference there? Yeah. I can't okay. the black details gone. The black details gone, but that now you see how much darker he is. Mm-hmm. And like he he and it, it's it is. It's enhancing your black level. And it's it's great. It's like, wow, that that just got deeper. But all it's doing, when you go back, all it's doing is it's it's taking your black floor, which is always the same. You're that's you're you can't make extra black. Right. You just have black. So it's taking more around it and making it black. That's what black enhancement is doing. So it's actually saying, all right, we're going to make everything even deeper to give you that more, get you closer to like, as you can see, the edges here are all um, around the screen. That's all velvet. So that's that's black, black. Um, 
But when you go to the contrast enhancement, it gets slightly closer to that, mm. but you lose all of that nice. And, and in real life, you can actually see it up on his, like by his forehead, you could see it a little bit. But what I noticed in real life is you, re especially in motion, you lost all of the nice detail that you can see, not mm. nice detail, but it's in the shoulder and stuff like that. Yeah. Shadow detail. The shadow detail. Mm. Yeah. And it's mm. all gone. And it, it, it took me, I, I don't even know why I all of a sudden decided that maybe I was watching the scene and I was like, oh, I wonder what happens because it's very, very limited detail there in reference. And I was like, I backed it up and I put it on. I was like, oh my God. And there's a scene before this about two minutes before this. It's almost identical. He backs against the wall. It's almost the identical scene, but that in both it looks exactly the same. The contrast enhancement doesn't affect it at all because it's so dark anyways. Mm -hmm. And I, I went back and forth on that one as well. But this one, like I said, at 5426, that's where you can really see the difference with contrast mm -hmm. enhancement off and, you know, contrast enhancement on. Did you try it with Vader's costume? Because with his with the different blacks he's got on his on his mm -hmm. you know he's, he's got his sort of boxers belt isn't he in the first one yeah um, and you've got the difference with his cape and which has a sort of velvet kind of edge along it yeah and then it's got the cape and then you've got underneath as well so it'd be interesting to see what it looks like with that too it's you um, can, I did stuff like that and you don't you don't lose as much because you you lose a little bit but the contrast the the contrast isn't as um, subtle. Right. Okay. Like mm -hmm. in this particular scene, it's like there, it's so close. Like what you see here on his shoulder and everything, it there, your, your black levels or your, your, your detail, it's such a, a fine gradation in black levels that that's something that can be crushed away by yeah. the contrast enhancement. Whereas on Vader, it's, there's a bigger difference. So you're not losing as much. You're going to, you're, you might lose. I didn't really a B it like this, mm -hmm. but you'll, you'll get a little bit darker here, but then like on his, um, <clears throat> like the plastic, you'll still mm -hmm. notice the difference in subtleties there. Cause it's not as subtle. Mm. If you, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, that this is why I, I and it's little things like this. It's like, do I really want my, you know, that looks darker, but it's not mm. correct. Right. No, it's like, quite, so yeah. you never want to lose the shadow detail. Funnily enough, DJ, that's something that um, Vincent Tio, when he calibrated my TV um, and he was showing me some, some, again, remember I said, I've said loads of times, you know, he, he wasn't about to do it with me out of the room. He's like, come in, sit there. We're going to, you're going to learn this and we're going to go through yeah. it. Um, and, you know, four hours later, it was great. We were geeking out. It was brilliant. And he put on some shots from the dark night. Um, mm. where, and he was going on then. He was saying, now, look, here is the, the, you know, the black floor. Here's the shadow detail. And he goes, look, if we do it this way, notice how all, the, all that detail is gone. Put it in this way. Now you can see it. And he was really keen to show how setting it in this particular way and calibrating it properly preserves that detail that you want to be able to see. Um, and then also showing scenes where he said, now, here, you're not supposed to see anything. It is just supposed to be black. And, and, you know, he, and he really, really emphasized that. And ever since then, whenever I review anything, I'm always sort of looking at that and the difference between l detail and crush, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and so, yeah, I, I get why you'd be you'd want to keep it the way it is now rather than changing to the, the enhanced black. But then you lose that detail because in some movies, perhaps not so much in this one, but in some films that there is stuff there that is there in the shadows that is there to be seen. It's supposed right. to be viewable. And if you lose that and you get rid of it, you're not then getting everything that, that you could from the film. Um, right. You know, you know, things like Fincher movies, you know, David Finch is famous for, for, you know, packing the darker parts of the frame with important information. Shyamalan does it as well. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of stuff. And so if you, yeah, if you boost the, the, the black levels, you, you're going to miss all that. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's, I just wanted to, I thought this was one of the few examples I could find that was that dramatic, right? Mm. Like you said, like there's a lot of scenes where like, well, I'm not really losing anything here. Yeah. Cause the, it's not as subtle. So you're not mm. really, I mean, this is literally just like, 
gone. <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, and, and it was I was I was happy that it showed up on the phone, too, because sometimes this stuff so subtle, it was hard to get this to show up on the phone, get the reference mm-hmm. quality to show up on the phone because, you know, so. But, yeah, so that'll do that for that tweak. And, uh, John, how are you doing in your situation? I know the update, but uh, any uh, any more? Um... Uh, projector should be here tomorrow. Nice. So, good. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Um, it's all been updated and repaired, so um, hopefully it was worth it. <laughs> I know we'll see <laughs> once I get it in place and get it all realigned and get to play with it a little bit. So you've got to do all that. They're not going to do that for you. Well, they won't. No, they're not going to realign it for me. Um, um, they, I mean, they didn't do it in the first the first time. I mean, they no. just yeah. It's it's not that big of a deal. It just takes a little time. Hmm. You just got to get it lined back up with the screen because the screen's in a fixed position. So you right. got to get everything lined back up with hopefully as little keystoning as possible, and then get it dialed in the rest of the way. So. And then, you, it's, but then at least you can now get it calibrated, I suppose, as well. You can, yeah, do, yeah, the update's done. done. So, yeah, now I can look into getting, uh, I mean, I'm going to live with it for a little while again, as it is, so I can see what I have and be able to notice the difference with a calibration after I get it. Because mm-hmm. if I just jumped right into it, I wouldn't even know what improvements were made, you know, but. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it back. uh, Did you ever get Dolby Vision on that yet? Not yet. That's another update that's still um, somewhere. uh, Supposedly just they're waiting on. It's all in Dolby's court waiting for them to approve the certification. So um, that's been the stock answer for several months. Um, So, you know, whether I believe that or 100 percent or not, I don't know, because I feel like it shouldn't take that long for Dolby to certify a machine. But um, but yeah, that's still coming uh, at some point down the in the horizon. So, yeah, cool. Cool. So can't wait for your tweaks of the week next week. Yeah, yeah, I should have at least a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. To talk about with the, uh, you know, the 24 FPS mode and then the. Um, the enhanced black level. Although, again, that's exactly what weren't we we were just talking about that, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, hopefully, that that's not what this is doing. Um, you know, by well, all no, accounts, hope, it's yeah. not. You know, by you know the people that have already had it, um, it's you know supposed to be a pretty big improvement. But I haven't seen it for myself. So, um, I mean, again, I've seen still you know sc- screenshots just like you put up, but it's harder to tell. You know, it's not oh, really yeah. representative of what you're going to see in person. So no, no, it's and that what you see in person, and it's if they can increase the black level, just their native black level right. by adjusting how you know it projects projects the light output, it everything like that. That that's different. But if it's right. like actually a setting, like okay, we're going to enhance your black level. It's like what is that doing? And that's usually like it's. Yeah. It, well, the thing is, it is a setting that you can turn on and off. Okay. Which is which is odd because, like, I don't know why anybody would choose not to use it. Well, um, here here is where I will so, say it, it is important. Is in on a situation like yours where you're dealing with ambient light. Yeah. You're gonna lose I, all that detail, anyways. Yeah. Right. I so you're trying true. to, you know what I mean? So like, you're in an ambient light situation with a screen. You're gonna lose that detail just because it's gonna get washed out anyway. You're not gonna be right. able to tell that gradation. So where you use contrast enhancement there, that's actually pumping it up for you, so that you in a in an ambient light situation, you can it feels like that's a deeper black and everything like right. that. So there is a situation for it. But in critical viewing in a in a you know a light controlled environment, none of that should be on. None of that. That's all stuff that like it's like when you put on when we talk about the uh compression we do for the sound and everything or you right. know, it's the same idea. It's like you don't want to be doing that in a in a critical viewing situation. Well, but I mean again, their their official response is that the update works best in a completely light controlled room. So hmm. 
so I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what it's doing until I get to see it. But um, yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. Um, all I know is that it increased the contrast ratio. Um, but again, my my point is, like I said, like you said initially, if it if you're just altering the output uh, light level, why would you ever want to turn it off? Like it shouldn't be an optional thing. It should have just been an update that they did that's in place. 100 percent of the time right you know and not something that you could just switch on and off because i don't see a, a reason why i would ever not use it but um you yeah, but you know maybe there is we'll see yeah well now i just gave you a scene i know you'll be pulling yeah. that up <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah, if nothing else movie, it makes John. it it makes it super easy to 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 test because i can right. just like i said go to a scene put it on, turn it off, you know, and yeah. see, what, see what the difference is. So it'll yeah. be pretty easy to judge. But um, yeah, I think I have star. I think I have that movie around here. I'll have to dig somewhere. for it, but <laughs> I might have a copy or two around somewhere. It's funny looking <laughs> behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I, I've heard of Star Maybe. Wars. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh very excited for next week's tweaks of the week. So, yeah. uh, you ready to uh, get to uh, some listener experiences? Sure. Mm -hmm. All righty. All right. Uh, let's see. Who wants to go first? Steve, why don't you, John, why don't you go first? You haven't been, you, you came in late. You haven't been. I came in Steve, late and I have really very little to contribute this episode. Right, so, so here you go. <laughs> I might as well do this. Yeah. Uh, so this is um, from G Cornell, uh, older action movies. A listener asked for suggestions of older action titles to watch. Here's a fast paced triple header. The French Connection from 1971. Speed from 1994 and Unstoppable from 2010. So those are great. Unstoppable is really good. We watched that as a family back probably in 2011, 2010 when it came out on disc. Uh, but yeah, that one's really good. And Speed, obviously. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the 4K release of Speed, Steve? Um, I remember it being very good. Oh yeah, really? I, yeah, I, because the now I've only watched it once. I have got it in 4K, but I remember it from what I could recall. It removed a lot of the sort of smudgy, hazy kind of look that the previous Blu-rays and the DVDs had. It always had it looked kind of mm. weird, um, and I wonder, and I thought at the time that was the shooting style. But the 4K disc cleans that up a bit. Um, the audio I seem to remember being okay, but nothing mm. amazing from from what I remember. Um, I think there's some quite nice overhead stuff at the beginning when the lifts are going up. Sorry, elevators. yeah, yeah. Going up and down. The lifts. <laughs> We're doing aluminum and aluminium. Let's get the, uh, yeah. the so when the, the elevator lift. lift things are going yeah. up and down, there, there's some quite nice kind of overhead movement in that. But yeah, it was okay. I I, I don't think I remember it wouldn't be reference, I wouldn't say. No. Um and yet it's some it previously, of course, when it was THX mastered for the DVD, if I remember rightly, because all the Fox films were. Mm -hmm. um, it was a reference disc at that point. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I, yeah. What about you? What do you think of it? I wasn't impressed with it. Um, mm. Picture wise, uh, I, I a beat it. I was going to do this one as an episode, and I ended up going doing Need for Speed. Hmm. And that's how I ended. So when I did Need for Speed, this I I actually got halfway through this movie and I was like I just wasn't jazzed up about it. I like the movie. I love the movie, and yeah. maybe that's why I was a little disappointed. I was expecting more out of the 4K, especially the sound. I hmm. really wasn't super impressed with it. I even the picture. Yes, the improvements. I agree with you. I read the same things. Hmm. I heard the same things, but I, I was like, it just I couldn't. You know, like when I was, when I'm doing a, a, a review like that and I sit down and do the sights, the sounds and the scenes, I need to be excited about it. And every scene I was like, mm, I just didn't feel it. I just mm. didn't want, so I was like, all right, let me try something else. And I didn't need for speed. And uh, I love that movie for sound, mm. but at speed, it's just, mm. and I love well, so the movie. It just yeah. doesn't, it wasn't there. 
The explosions and stuff have got a bit more kind of punch with the HDR from what I can remember as well. They're a little bit more hot. I know that's a stupid phrase to use with an explosion, but they look, but the, the, there's got more texture to it. They, they're yeah. a little bit more lifelike. They're not as sort of faded as the, uh, as the DVD and the Blu-ray, but yeah, it's not a reference disc. It's not one you're going to dig out to go, look at my system guys, check yeah. out 4k. You know, yeah. you're, you're not going to do it, but then I don't think it ever really was. It was never. It good, could be though, because it's a fun movie. 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 Yeah, but only within the confines of what was shot. You know, you, you're going to go back to the original camera negative. If it was supposed to look that way, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's okay. I, I, I mean, it's a great film. It is a good film. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's not one you're going to dig out. I mean, Unstoppable would be interesting to see that re- redone in 4K. Mm. Um, was that one of Tony Scott's last ones? With Denzel Washington and because um, it's Denzel Washington and Chris Pine, isn't it? Chris Pine, yeah, yeah. The- it, I think it was one of his last films. I think it was. Um, that's how I remember it, but I might be wrong. But yeah, that would be interesting. And it's a loud movie. <laughs> I haven't. You know what? I haven't seen it for ages. I've got the Blu-ray. Yeah. I, in fact, that's one I've got from the states. I imported that. Yeah. So I need to. Yeah, I might have to get back and. Have you seen that. those, John? Uh, I've seen them all. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I don't have any of them in 4K or Blu-ray, for that matter. Um, I have oh, speed right. on DVD. <laughs> so, <laughs> and after my review, that's probably yeah. where it'll stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I don't even have my D. DV- my DVDs are all for sale in my store right now, so I don't even have oh, DVDs really? anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> I won't watch one. I'd rather just stream it. <clears throat> yeah, well, there you go. Um, yeah, you could stream it in 4K and be per- yeah. pretty It'd equal be better to than what the you DVD. got on the DVD <laughs> for sure. I was thinking Blu-ray, but yeah. DVD. Well, Blu-rays I'll still watch. I, I, yeah. you know, there's still some very good Blu-rays, but DVD I won't watch anymore. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you want to take the next one? Yeah, this Rockstar. Rock Stars one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, right now. <laughs> this is a comment to after the um, Ghostbusters Afterlife episode from uh, from Brock Star. Never, we don't know what his first name is. We never figured that out. Um, and the uh, but the comment is uh, GB Afterlife is such a good AV demo. You have to just play through the whole thing. The audio is demo worthy every five to eight minutes. Now. <laughs> I've got. A, I, I, I only worked out today what that was. Ghost because buses? as I read that, tell me. I mean, you guys won't have done it because you're not used to seeing it. I saw GB Afterlife, and I thought he meant the British version of the Netflix Ricky Gervais for, uh, series <laughs> Afterlife, right? <laughs> so I thought GB was Great Britain afterlife <laughs> and i was thinking of all the things that series is what it's not yeah. is AV Dem- i was, I was yeah. looking at it thinking have i missed something now we've all seen that sh- we've both yeah. seen that show but yeah well yeah, quite, have- one thing it's not <laughs> yeah it's an av we've demo every that. five to eight minutes yeah, yeah. but Steve- i know i know it says it right above it i know <laughs> I, I, I could not see it any other way. It's only today I realized what he meant. <laughs> That's awesome. I, isn't it funny how you read something and you can't then read well, it right. any other way? You only see it a certain way. You have it yeah. like you can't, you know, it, it, yeah. until you can, until it's yeah. evident to you that you're like, oh my God. How did I, it's like, it's right it's above like, it. <laughs> with a picture and everything yeah, you know yeah i just so, i just it's bizarre i just read it as yeah. a Brit, you know great britain this afterlife is a good av demo watch no. this. I, i'm gonna share that screen i'm gonna share that so people yeah, can see just, what you're seeing I, <laughs> did, I just i don't know what it was it just my brain oh. just read it one way and it was not going to do it any other way so yeah it, it genuinely uh, took me about 30 that, reads of that to realize what it was that's funny let's see here we go i can share that <laughs> this is what's yeah let me unhighlight it oops <laughs> this is what he's seeing <laughs> some notes yeah brockstar commented on your video and all i do is i screen grab just that picture right and, and so it has the title and everything right above it yeah i know i just saw gb and thought great britain and then after like thinking it's Ricky yeah. Gervais. it's so great <laughs> but you're right that is not at all a great no. av demo no. no it's a seriously incredible show great uh, series or, yes great yeah, series yeah the last the last episode of that just just i mean How i, I he- loudly yeah, right. sobbed 
during that embarrassingly yeah. loudly sobbed. The li- I mean, you know, links into our charity, doesn't it, of this month, but the the, the, the little child saying, you know, do you believe in heaven and, and what yeah. does it look like? Oh, my God. On, honestly, it, it was embarrassing how loudly I was sobbing at that. It was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, God. It was, but it's just so well done. So You're well like written. me. You're just like me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not just Sunny go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one, um, Grinder. He comes in. Uh, confession time. I have. <laughs> he's like, confession time. I've never seen Pulp Fiction from beginning to end. I've seen bits and pieces here and there, but never the whole thing in one sitting. I was hooking up the system for kids' birthday on weekend and looked on my power amp it says 1500 watts max draw of course i donated some blood to the cause i sliced a bit of my finger off cutting down the carpet um yeah he's talking about his theater that he's Mm. building uh finished a little bit of wiring today on ht by the way i did something i said i wouldn't do i somewhat listened back to the podcast i was on i still hate my voice good thing i am not a singer (laughs) (laughs) time to try out putting up some of my corner traps and see what it does to sweeps at MLP of LCR. Wish me luck, Grinder. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the confession time on the Pulp Fiction, bits and pieces. Well, that's kind of the way Pulp Fiction is taken. The entire thing is bits and pieces. <laughs> so maybe you have seen the whole thing. You don't even realize it. We've got more confessions in the chat. Van Gogh is saying, I'm like him and have not seen Pulp Fiction. Why are you watching this? Just pause it. Go and yeah. watch it. Come oh back. My. You'll wait. We'll wait. We're okay. <laughs> yeah. My God. That and it's not like it's a new movie. <laughs> <laughs> You've had 20 years to watch it. Um but although no, I mean, you it, hadn't seen Christmas Vacation because you said you only watch it after your birthday. But there's only been like 30 birthdays <laughs> since yeah, it came yeah, out. Well, yeah, quite. Which is the greater one to not have seen? Pop fiction or Christmas vacation? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. I don't know. I win. Christmas. Fact. Uh, yeah. Pop fiction. <laughs> For sure. Uh, uh, let's WV Brew. Uh, Owen Wilson paint. I didn't even know this was coming out. Did you guys see this? No. I, yeah, I saw the saw the tweet, but I hadn't I hadn't seen. Yeah, I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. I know the guy. I've seen. I remember watching this, this series. Uh, this, Bob this, Ross. This, Bob Ross. Yeah, this, yeah. This came out. This was over here for a while. It was on. You know, one of the very small cable channels. But you know, it was always so relaxing just watching him paint and listening to him talk. You know, right. he was uh, great for insomniacs, but not good if you were uh, operating heavy machinery. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he just fascinating. What was the draw? Was if you'll forgive the expression. Was the was it, was it just it's just relaxing to just watch him paint? Is that what it was for you guys as well? Or well, am I for us it was now. F- <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, DJ, but he wasn't the first guy. There was no. a guy on that show before him that was like an older German bald guy. Yeah, and, and he did hey, hey, nothing he wrong did with bald show. guys. Nothing wrong with bald guys. <laughs> no, um, and then it became Bob. Uh, not answering for DJ, but for me it was just the fact that I wanted to try to recreate the paintings. Right. Okay. I fancied okay. myself a bit of an artist, and I yeah. liked right. to try to do that. Um, okay. And so that's what it was for me. Like as a kid, his personality didn't really like it didn't register Happy for me little at all. This. Yeah, it was more just I liked watching the art portion of it. Although right. again, it's all just hotel lobby art, right? Like none of it's real art. Well, but- that's what I was going to get to. <laughs> it's funny that WV sent this because th- literally when he sent this out like within minutes of each other i was having a conversation with ara from hd to hd guys and he him and his i think his daughter or something they're taking a bob ross class and they're oh, doing yeah. bob ross paintings and he sent me his daughters and then his and i'm looking at them and his daughters are really good his are a little like what i said to him i'm like you're pushing too hot on the brush buddy right. <laughs> it's like you got and his daughters are like highlighting that his daughter is highlighting the trees really nicely her knife work on the mountains is really good like what you just you barely putting the knife on the canvas and it's like you could tell and we had this problem too we had to learn how to do this but it's like and when i say we we used to do this and john and i 
can talk about this, but when we were kids, we'd go into class, into our art class, and do this stuff. And Mr. McPhee, our teacher, would be like, stop it. Stop it. That's, and he'd be like, that's junk. It's not art. <laughs> that's not art. He's like, but, and we would love it. But they would, yeah. this, Bob would, he'd turn these things out in like a half hour, a half hour show. And that's what we wanted to do. Right. And we could do it. And we'd be like, remember asking him, can I get a spatula? No, because <laughs> yeah. I know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> and then try to do it in acrylic and you can't because it dries right. too fast. So you have to do it in oil. And it's, it, it, what, what was one of the, R R is like, he goes, yeah, we've got to get more, um, what's it called? White, not magic white or what did they call it? it was, I, I forget. Oh, crush, no. <laughs> No, it was, was blue. I, I, yeah, I don't remember what, what it, it was. Whatever it was, but it, it, it's it just all rang a bell. Everything, but it's it, these two conversations are going on at the same time, and I get WV's tweet at this. That's what I mean. I'm like, this is just hysterical. I didn't even know this movie was coming out. I didn't either, and honestly, I didn't even know that was a real thing. I thought it was just a meme. Yeah, <laughs> like I thought it was just a joke. <laughs> I, I I think it's real, right? Because I don't know. I can't really read. I can't read this. It's a little too small for me. But, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I thought no, I it was just real. a joke. I think it's like a biopic. I think. I think yeah, maybe it is. is. Uh, I'd read somewhere about it, but I just figured it's it was always about choice, sort of though. Like, meditation and relaxing. I you so know, just, don't just, see Owen Wilson doing that part. Like. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I don't know. It, it, might, it might be a comedy. Maybe it's a maybe, but you know, it feels very miscast. The whole show was a comedy. Well, it was yeah. a happy little trees. But the right. guy before him, like you said, was they painted exactly the same way. Right, same it show. It was formulaic. still called, I think it was called the Joy of Painting, even yeah. before yeah. Bob Ross was just the second guy. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And it was so. PBS for us, which is you know mm. just public TV. No, that it, I mean, I'm thinking it could be a great home theater experience, right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you want to take the next one? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, PK Hamu 2005, um, mm -hmm. Home Theater Experience, Rocky 1, 2, and 3, and 4K. I do agree with Jason, Steve. F1 is a yeah. is a fantastic. Okay, do agree with Jason, Steve. Statham, I yeah. Statham, <laughs> I don't know. F1 no, is a fantastic. He's calling him Jason Statham. Okay. That's why I said uh, that. Jason. Okay. It's a fantastic <laughs> show. It is encoded in Dolby Vision, and the day scenes are fabulous. Not sure whether your TV has Dolby Vision. Uh, truly amazing how much each team principal goes through in running a team and yet never lose their mind. But I also feel some private one-to-one -one conversations they are recording on camera, which at times feel scripted and could be an act of obligation for Netflix. Subwoofers truly breathe when the race starts. Mm. That's Drive to Survive he's talking about there from yeah. the one Drive to Survive. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, my TV does have Dolby Vision, but I, I've often said I don't think it makes much difference, at least not on my TV. It, 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 the, 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 the contrast is so high on it that, that, you know, it didn't make much difference. And again, I remember having this conversation with Vincent Tio, who's like, Steve, it won't on your TV. Right. You, don't, you don't really need it. It's for right. the, it brings up lesser displays. Yours just doesn't need it. Um, cause I, AB, I remember a being bright, the Will Smith thing. Then we go back to the mm. Oscars and the slap. Um, and I remember a being bright on Dolby vision and then non Dolby and just being, ah, I can't see the difference unless I looked really, really closely. You absolutely just doesn't matter. Um, so yes, I've got it, but I, I'm not bothered about Dolby vision. It doesn't very little for me at all and certainly doesn't affect my viewing or, or buying decisions at all um but uh, but yeah no it's a great series it is good um i don't think it is scripted i think it's quite the opposite i mean some of the stuff they say including about netflix and blatantly i can't imagine any streaming service saying i've got a great idea have this script and call us anything you like right. I, I mean i think it's quite clearly not scripted um it just looks as though they're just told you know the cameras are on the, walking along just ignore us you do what you like and then they just they they play stuff that that you wouldn't believe, because um, it certainly doesn't help their brands. Right. <laughs> so yeah, but it's a great show. It is really good and well worth watching. Cool. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next one. 
Why don't you read the next one as well? It's also from yes. PK. This is pretty yes. cool. So, say, oh. yeah. Do you want to do that, John? Yeah, go on. I, I can, yeah, it's because uh, it's also from PK. Uh, PK here, I genuinely want to know, is there any movie which DJ didn't like? He is overflowing with so much optimism that he likes every movie in his theater. That's heights of optimism. Um, well, we all know how he feels about speed. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, like I, uh, movie. <laughs> I replied to this and I just said, ask him what he thought of malignant. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. And it's funny because um, that's the problem with being, you know, I, all I talk about is the good stuff. I mean, you want negativity. There's plenty of it out there. So I just choose not to dwell on that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of movies I don't like, but I just don't talk about them. Now, if I haven't talked about a movie, it doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just maybe I haven't gotten to it. But it's, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, I, I'm of the belief that when you talk negative about stuff, it's it, somebody likes it. So you're only going to, and it's just my opinion, right? Mm. So talking negative about something that who does that help? Right. And it's like, and I, I get, I'm not saying that nobody should do it. I just choose, there's so much of it. I choose not to. And I've always been, John knows that I've always been this way, always been this way. It's just, it's before social media. It's just like, why bother? Um, I, I think it goes to the, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Right. Let, hmm. you know, so it's like, I'm not trying to save anybody's life here by making you, helping you avoid stuff. I just want to talk about the good stuff and you can find negativity elsewhere. Right. Um, and not, not to dissuade, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but isn't all the good stuff you talk about just your opinion also? As well. Yes, absolutely. You know, so absolutely. I mean, your, your positive opinion is just as valid mm -hmm. as your, as your negative opinion. Or your negative opinion is just as valid, right, as your positive opinion would be. If you're happy showing, telling people what your opinions are of things you like, right. it shouldn't devalue your opinion of the things that you don't like. Um, now, whether you choose to talk about them or not is right. different, but you, you're, you're saying it's just my opinion. Um, that invalidates your positive opinions too, right? So, Well, they're all – I mean, it's, the validation comes from the beauties in the eye of the beholder. If you want to devalue my opinion, I don't devalue my opinion, right? And I have my opinions in both directions. I don't devalue them. And it's, and people do, I, I, people have devalued my opinion personally in real life at work because I'm positive there as well. My boss used to call, when I worked for a different company, he used to call me in all the time to talk to me because he's like, I know you're always going to give me the positive spin on something. Tell me what to see here. And I'm like, he knows that I know the negatives as well. He goes, but this is what's going on at work. What, what do we think in here? And I'm like, well, this is boom, 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 boom. And we'll, we'll get through it this way. And I'll, I'll put the positive on it, but I understand the negatives. The point is, yes, I don't devalue it. It's the, like, if you guys don't want, if people don't want to listen to me cause I'm too positive, that's on them. And that's fine. I get that. But I don't want to put any more negativity. I don't choose to put any more negativity out there because I, I just don't, I just don't there. And the other part is why would I want to say I said, <laughs> Carl, you see Carl's <laughs> comment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> DJ slams my opinions 24 seven, <laughs> but not directly. I don't talk to Carl and slam his opinions. I, all I, <laughs> they might not coincide with you as the listener and you're sitting there. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm not slamming your opinion. Your opinions are valid, right? Just, I, I don't agree with it, but do you see what I mean? Like, look at Carl here. He's like, he slams my opinion 24 seven. I've never said anything negative to him. Imagine if I had, but that's my point. It's like by saying something negative, you're only going to make somebody upset. And I don't want to do that. If somebody gets upset about me being positive, well, that's on you. <laughs> so I, you know, and I'm not saying people shouldn't say negative opinions because that's how we find out some of the bad things out there. I've, I read negative opinions and I'll avoid stuff if I trust that person's opinion. I just choose not to partake in that. Now, I'll tell you my go-to movie, the only movie I've ever returned, Judge Dredd. 
bought it on Laserdisc and returned it that day. <laughs> Just be <laughs> very quick, Deej, because there might be people that don't know that's the Stallone version, the Stallone not the Carl Urban one. <laughs> right. No, like I love the Carl Urban one. That's called Dread. The Stallone mm. Judge Dread is the only movie I've ever mm. returned uh, on Laserdisc, and he was nice enough to take it back. Um, but yeah, no, I love that question though. I, I that PK said that people ask me have asked me that before. I get that all the time. Is there anything you don't like? Yeah, there's a lot I don't like, but it's like I, I don't, <clears throat> I don't choose to partake in uh, letting everybody know. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see, and and like you said, if you like malignant, we had to talk. I had to talk about that. We it was on the show, and it's like. <laughs> It's a good film, damn it. <laughs> you like it. <clears throat> but that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, oh, crap. I got to talk about this. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got, I'll got. i go through this one. Paul, mm. Paul Hurt's email. He says, it's official. Transformers is a better film than The Godfather. <laughs> In DJ's home theater anyway. That is correct. He also said, I suppose if the sights and sounds are important, we could restrict film re <clears throat> we could restrict it to films with good disc releases, which would help narrow it down. <clears throat> Excuse me, talking about like the uh, older movies and stuff. And that's the point. That was the point of this podcast, the sights, the sounds, the scenes, what we're doing in our theaters. Um, and you know, we've we've kind of expanded on that a little bit, but it, I mean, but the, at the core of this podcast, anyways, it's about the home theater experience and it's, you know, not a little less Siskel and Ebert and a little bit more about the technical stuff and the fun sights and sounds and scenes. So that's, that's where I went with that. So, but yeah, people are getting that. So, uh, and then this last one, I'll just click on Jack Leah tweet. Um, it, Brightside HT at Legal Beagle OK. And John, sorry, I don't have him on Twitter. This is a Discord group here from here in Australia about home theater. I think you may enjoy it. Been listening to the show for over six months now, really enjoying it and learning heaps. So <laughs> thanks, Jack. Uh, and um, I I should add everybody's. I'm going to add it, start adding everybody's Twitter into the show notes because uh, we forget to say it here all the time. We should be saying it. But John's Twitter handle is uh, at Arkham Comics with an X. Correct, John? That is correct. And uh, so, but I will put all three of us into the show notes and it'll show up in every every show going forward. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so thanks, Jack. Appreciate listening. And I will also have this uh, Discord note in this Discord link in the show notes as well. So, all right. That should do it for listener experiences. Yeah, what do you we want to just Steve? touch on the, yeah, the Disney article. It's in, the, it's in my notes. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, should about we that. just quit? Just, just. You're okay. Should we just quickly talk about that? Just because it's been all over Twitter and it's been all over the the the, the interwebs this week. Um, oh, so yeah, this is, that's right. Sorry, yeah, buddy. Yeah, no, you're okay. It's, say it's in my show notes. I think you whether you take yeah, it out or we, we've I've, missed. I've it. got sure. it in mind too. So. Yeah, rather than summarize the, the rather than read out the whole sort of article, which is someone else's and, and isn't fair, just to sort of summarize it. Essentially. Um, it has become public knowledge, something that I was told yeah. a number of weeks ago. Um, and again, I still don't want to say who, even though he outed himself on Twitter. Um, but I don't want to just, I don't want to, you know, necessarily right. say too much about it. Um, so it looks as though we all know, obviously, Disney, the CEO changed. Um, uh, Bob Iger, isn't it, came back. Um, and um, they have now realized something that, and a lot of us were thinking, which is that streaming is not paying the bills. And Disney have now looked at, and because Bob Iger back when he was the CEO previously was very much keen on physical media as a, as a viable revenue stream. And, and he has been critical this week and recently um, about streaming and how it's, as I said, not paying the bills. So they are now, and it's become public knowledge this week on this article, now re-looking at their traditional delivery systems, that being code for physical media. Um, and 
I am aware through a conversation I had with someone who works for Disney um, and, and is in a position to know that they have decided that they're going to look at this again and they are looking at licensing a number of their, their titles, both back catalog and recent releases um, for not only release by themselves, but licensing, licensing it to others. Um, and you guys know, because we talked about it, and I'm not going to say the title that we talked about on here, because again, that's not been officially made public yet. Um, but at least one of their very, very big um, releases from last year has been licensed uh, to a label um, for release that's going to make everybody very happy indeed. Um, but again, I'm not at liberty to say what it is, but you guys know, because we told you off air. Yeah. Um, so this was not news to me, but it is certainly news to everybody else and everyone's getting very excited. And the hope is that means we may get Mandalorian. We may get, that's not the, this title, we might get Mandalorian. We may get things like The Abyss. We might get the Touchstone releases, so Tombstone, things like that. Um, and that we f- might finally get all this stuff coming on 4K disc, which would be very cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lots of excitement this week about that, and rightly so. And, of course, where Disney leads – Others will follow. Yeah. Um, so that's the other thing as well. And it may well be then that, the, I mean, I think back catalog wise, the last couple of years have been pretty good. Um, yeah. You know, Warner's Universal, Sony, you know, they've been raiding their vaults. Um, but it, it does bode well for a number of movies that may have yet to, to make it out. Um, and hopefully, you know, those will come. So, yeah, very, very exciting times. Um, and it can only be good, even if it only means there's an extra four or five releases a year. It, they could be really good stuff that are must own. You know, movies like Dances with Wolves, <clears throat> you know, that's a Fox film. You know, again, Tombstone we talked about previously. Mm. You know, these kinds of films that would be absolutely fantastic to finally have in 4K yep. might be coming. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Streaming, the Mandalorian, uh, that's the stuff that yeah. I think they're going to get. They They could actually make some money big money on i think from mm-hmm. but again we'll see how big of a market we are I mean, mm. you know the people that will buy that is it does it put a dent in them because i think as they start releasing stuff does it just start as a trickle and then pick up and if mm-hmm. if people start grabbing it and they'll be like all right let's get more and more out there um mm-hmm. You know, I think they I think they tried to do everything um, exclusively streaming to try mm-hmm. and make people watch it. But you're the problem with it is streaming exclusivity to streaming doesn't necessarily mean people won't. You know, people will only watch you. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to have I'm having a hard time explaining what I'm thinking. But what it is is like if they. they I feel like they were afraid to put it on disc because people wouldn't get the stream. And I don't think yeah. that's the case. I think I think they missed they missed the idea that people automatically we already do both. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like we want to see like the Mandalorian live, watch it, talk about it, and then when it comes out, we'll we'll watch it again and talk about it, but we'll buy it again. I think it's a very even more rare person that's like, ah, I'll just wait for it on disc, you know, it, with yeah. this kind with this kind of thing. So yeah, well, then you can do both. I mean, what is it, seventy, eighty dollars a year? It's about eighty pounds a year for Disney Plus. You can right. get that, pay that up front. That's done, and then yeah. you can still buy the discs, and then you own it. You know, you've got it, and you and and in better quality as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, as I said, this this particular person said, you know, Disney are waking up to this, and they're not alone. Um, and yeah. that, you know, the, the seven ninety nine a month or $80 a year is just not going to keep this stuff coming. Whereas your $25, $30 every month, two or three titles a month, that works out at quite a decent investment. And if you think about, I mean, you guys might know better than I do, but, but the way I think of this is the master, the, 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 the master of the film or the TV show is set and it's done, isn't it? It's done at the, at, at when, when they finish filming it. Mm-hmm. So, so licensing that to another company, you know, means it, it just must be all gravy, mustn't it? it just must be all right. money. They haven't got to do anything. There's your file. Right. Here's your digital file. You do what you want to do with it. Give us, I don't know, whatever it might be, $10 million. What I, don't, I have no idea. Right. You know, just for a sake, yeah. for argument's sake, $10 million. Give us that. Go Bye-bye then. Off you go. 
that's just 10 million they've made without having to do anything for it. It's just whatever it's money, all whatever money, money whatever they they make. Yeah. 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 It so could be per it sale. Be. It could be like, they just get a percentage of what you sell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, could well be. Yeah. But whatever it's just it all gravy. It's but it's just, just, all just extra. extra. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So why not? You know, it, it, yeah. it, it, it's it's a bit surprising. It's taken this them this long to really think. Well, actually, that makes sense. Let alone the fact that that, that Disney Plus is still not available in huge swathes of the of the world, and yeah. and but you know they'll be able to pick up the discs. So there's all kinds of of of, of financial sort of revenue streams there that they yeah. can exploit. Um, as well as the people like us who will, you know, lap this stuff up all day long. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So more th- AB you know, looking good. <laughs> Sorry, AB more AB well, in in the, in yeah, the theater. Or, or, like, well, we know at least ooh. one person, John, don't we? That'll buy six copies of anything so of everything. Fun. Yes, yeah, anything and everything all at once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in everywhere, <laughs> I only own it once. <laughs> well, well, yeah you say yeah. so so it's yeah. you know it, it, it it's a bit surprising it's taken this long to realize it but it is exciting and it is encouraging yes and as i said when i heard this this few weeks ago again before this had been released i was like ooh, so much so i texted you guys almost straight away um yeah and you know i was excited about it but it's nice to now see that, that this is you know it's becoming public knowledge and for them to have released this to the press which they did right. is mm. a very good is good news um the only negative for me will be I'll, I'll then have to buy all the Marvel TV shows, and I'm sorry, I'm the one that doesn't like them in One Division, and I didn't like. Um, oh, really? What was the? Yeah, I didn't like uh. the ending, um, and I didn't like uh, Miss Marvel and stuff as well. And I'll have to buy them because I'll have to have the set, so that's mildly irritating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, because uh, as a completionist, I'd have to. You got to um, get the set go. so that you can put them into the little sleeves in your in in media hand. closet. Buy it to bin it. <laughs> buy it and bin <laughs> it. Just burn it, it outside. Bin it. Yeah, forget the oh. unboxing videos. Deej, we'll just have a burning video. There you go. <laughs> there goes midway. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'm oh. onto something. <laughs> a <Yeah>. burning channel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, so it's but it's really exciting times for, for people like us that, that will is. hoover this stuff up. And John, six months later, you yep. know, they will hoover, <laughs> hoover this stuff up. Hey, man. But, but yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know the value man. of a dollar. Yep. <laughs> Good man. That's yep. it. So, so, you know, it's, it's great news. It's really exciting for us. Although, as I said, I still think physical media and 4K in particular has had a pretty good couple of years. Um, Bearing in mind how niche it is, it's niche of the niche of the niche, you know, 7% of home video buying, you know, it, it's, it's nothing really, but it's exciting for us. And, and, and that's good news. And, and, you know, so yeah, long may it continue. Um, and as I said, hopefully others will follow suit. So we shall see. I'll buy Tombstone day one though. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dancers with Wolves. Full price. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not so much. I, I, I love that film. Not as much, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that one. <laughs> hmm. uh, but there's a I've, few that I'd pick up right away. Okay, so tell me this then, very briefly, guys. Would you buy the director's? Uh, sorry, would you buy the theatrical version of Tombstone if that's all it was? Yeah, I think the director's I mean, cut that's changes all that it radically. Was I mean, I would. Yeah, I still probably would, and then I'd buy the director's <laughs> cut when it came out again. I, I'm not even sure, to be honest with you, that I've seen the director's cut. What is no. the Blu-ray? The Blu-ray is just the theatrical uh, cut, right? I think it's the director's cut. I don't remember. I, yeah, I, I haven't it seen is, it in a while because I've been waiting for the 4K. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, for, I, forever. I'm pretty sure it I'll is. have to double it's check. One of those but really I don't know what's change. different about it. So it's it, there's 20 odd minutes. It's an it's an you know there are really? there there are significant chunks of that, that that were changed. I mean, I it's one that I I would hesitate to buy if it was just the theatrical. It's got huh. both. I mean, all day long. But I think right. on its own, I love the movie. Don't get me mm. wrong. But I think I'd want now having seen the director's cut, I'd only really want now, that. Where where is that available? Um, well, I've got it on Blu-ray. I'm pretty sure oh, that's well, then that's good. Yeah. And that must be what yeah. I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I'd have to double check. But, but I yeah. mean, I've owned that on DVD and VHS. Like I've mm. owned it, and I don't remember it being different. So I, maybe yeah, I'm, okay. Maybe yeah. I've never seen it. I'd be, I don't know. Mm. Okay, but yeah, I, I mean, we'd, we'd get that for sure. But there's so many Fox mm. movies that would just be great to have. I mean, obviously, all the Aliens films. I mean, you know, it'd be nice to have those. Obviously, we've got Prometheus, we've got um, Covenant, and we've got Alien. 
but it would be nice to have aliens and alien three and even alien resurrection if you have to um you know it would be nice to to have them um you know so many good films the the fox vaults are overflowing and you know disney have got them i mean obviously all the diehard movies would be nice well again two and three the weapon yeah yeah well uh, well that's warner's Lethal oh, Weapons Warner's. Warner's. That's coming. Yeah. They, that'll that'll come. It's just a case of, well, I think they're waiting to see if they'll get Lethal Weapon Five off the ground and then release it with that. Um, but yeah, exactly. There's so many great movies that could still come, um, and and you know, and nice to see an acknowledgement that physical media is worth having. Um, so fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Anyway, sorry, DJ, again, over, right. overtook that one. No sorry, problem. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's get to uh, coming soon. We'll cook through mm-hmm. this. All right. Up first, we have Red Eye coming Ooh, nice. from what's that for? What year is that from? 2005. Mm. We have Red Eye. Then we have uh, Dragon Slayer from 1981. <laughs> That's the regular. And then there's also a steel book to go along with that. Um, we have uh, Babylon from 2022. <laughs> which we'll talk yep. about in a little bit. Uh, looking forward to that. There's also a steel book for that as well that I'll pull up in a minute. Uh, but we have Rocky Four, the standalone for that, the steel book standalone for that. And then we have The Long Wait, which is from 1954. So let me see if I can find the Babylon Steelbook. Babylon Steelbook. Where did it go? Oh, I guess I don't have it in here. I thought I loaded it up. But yeah, it was there's a nice uh that's the Babylon one. But we'll talk about that one later. But those are all coming out on Tuesday, March 21st. So check those out. Um any of those uh, interest you guys? Red Eye is a is a definite one for me. I'll be buying that. It's out here next week as well. That's a that's a day one for me. I really like that film. That's yeah, yeah. great. Uh, does does look a bit with from that picture. I've not seen that 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 cover art. It rather reminds me of Titanic, and something else was going on during that. When Kate Winslet puts her hand on the on the, uh, yeah. the glass of the car, something else is going on there than what's happening in that picture. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I a, uh, a, I was like, where are you going with this? Yeah, I'm I was just like, saying. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, no, it's a good yeah. film. Have you guys seen it? Yes. I haven't yeah. seen that one, but I like Rachel oh, McAdams yeah. and Killian yeah, Murphy. Yeah, Wes Craven. Yeah, it's a it's a you know a nice kind of real taut thriller. Yeah, it is. I, I enjoy that one. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, really well done film. Yeah, I think uh, you'd enjoy that, Deej. It's worth that uh, worth picking up that one. Okay, I mm. I will check it out. All right, that does it for that. Uh, let's we cooked along with that. That's good. So let's get to this week's real HT experience. All right, uh, removing some from here. Um, Steve, you want to open up with your first one? You're, you're just going to cook along with us, right, John? You don't have anything? I don't have anything, no. You've I mean, seen I've the seen shows, a couple, though, of, right? I've, yes, mm. I just. So we'll talk about nothing that. on my projector or in my theater, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we'll yeah we'll we'll do the so the last of us then. Um, you might have heard of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we've obviously talked about it. And, and are you up to date, John? By the way, yes. have you done? You, yeah, I've well, seen can, it all. Yeah. And I know you have, Deej, because it mm-hmm. was in your notes, isn't it? So, okay, so it's finished. Um, and it finished exactly as the game does, which is really good. Um, very very enjoyable. Um, they they stuck to the landing, I think. And I had real concerns about the the, the last episode because it was only forty five minutes long, and mm. boy did they have a lot to cover in that time. Right. Um, but they they got through it okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and interestingly, guys. Now, John, you know what's coming next because I know you had it spoiled for you because of Facebook. I, I do, yes. Yeah, DJ, you don't, and I'm not going to spoil it. Um, but suffice to say, what I thought was really interesting, and just very briefly, the 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 um, action sequence at the end, when Joel does what he does, and again, because there'll be lots of people that won't have seen it, and I'm not going to spoil that. But but what was very interesting is the somber music playing when this shootout is going on, because that music is telling the audience 
that this is not a good thing. This is mm. not saving someone. This is the start of darkness and pain. Mm. And I'm telling you, this is this is not a rescue. This is this is the beginning of bad things to come. And so I thought it was a really interesting thing. The, the temptation from the makers must have been: let's go all over it. Let's give it you know, an action beat. Let's have rock music and shooting and blasting and you know, let's go full Rambo. Right. But actually, it's not like that. It's actually very, very somber. And and I and I think that's lovely. And that will, as I say, pay dividends when those that don't know what's coming see what's coming. Um, because yeah, this just is setting in train a motion of uh, yeah, putting in train events. Now- in, in very, very broad strokes. Is there a way that they don't do that? In, in, in what way? What do, that They don't follow is, the games, you mean? Well, yeah. Is there a way for what I know is going to happen to not happen and still follow the story? No. Is, like, it, is that something that they'll do as, as what yeah, I'm Oh, like, 100%. What, yeah. what happens is the reason for the whole next game. I mean, it's right at the beginning. So they, they, they couldn't have – the second game without this incident happening. Okay. Like I said, yeah, I know this, it's very this, broad strokes. Yeah, I don't no, quite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, you know they is, they love to change. Like you know, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. TV yeah, yeah. shows are notorious for changing things, yeah. and I don't know how much that can't be changed. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. it, 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 the, the, they couldn't do the second game without this incident that's coming. Okay. They just couldn't right. do it. You, you, I won't say anything it, else because I don't. Yeah, want no, to I know, no, I know. <laughs> but it, it and and again, and I think this 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 music and the way they they framed this and shot this thing makes it absolutely stone cold certain that what is going to happen is going to happen. Um, so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I thought it was great. And it ends up, and it ends exa- exactly the same as the game. The dialogue at the end is, is identical. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. Really enjoyed it. I can't comment on the home theater stuff cause I haven't seen it. Um, I noticed by the way, Van Gaul's put in the, in the, um, in the chat that um, something that I saw earlier today as well, um, yeah. Jordan Carpenter tweeted it out. It, something we already know that it's getting a physical release July. looks like 17th yeah, of July, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you know, we'll all be picking that up, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, but the only, the only downside is apparently they're not going to start shooting the second season until the end of this year at the earliest. So we'll be waiting two years to see this, yeah. you know, which is a long time, you know, in episodic TV, that's quite a long time, isn't it? So, but two years um, now seems to be the norm as opposed to really? the, yeah. yeah, because think about Mandalorian, yeah. think about mm. we're watching carnival row. That was like three years between seasons and oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, we're not going to get rings of power for two years, two and a half years. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I think it's becoming, which is unfortunate because I think it's too long, but mm. it seems to be the norm ra- rather than the out, you know, the outlying situation you know unless you're cobra kai then you come every six months but well that that kind of segues into exactly what i was going to say um i think we'll take the two years for the production quality that we're getting Mm -hmm. right these aren't the but cobra kai is closer to a sitcom right there's not a lot of production going on i mean it's actors i'm not saying there's no production but what we love about you know, The Last of Us, The Mandalorian, Carnival Row, Foundation, um, all of these shows, or Game of Thrones, they all up their production quality to cinematic experiences at home. And it, it takes time to do these things. It takes right. time and money. So they, they want to put out a show, and if it does well, okay, we'll get back at it and do another one. But that's of- the thing. It, it goes back to a lack of commitment by the studios to give these things two and three season orders right. at the outset. Because you mm-hmm. could do this like Lord of the Rings and just never stop filming. You know, you mm-hmm. could film two, three seasons back to back to back, and we wouldn't have to wait that two years between between seasons but you know these all these studios you know like look at um stranger things which we're not going to get season five for another year i mean these kids are going to be like parents by the time <laughs> maybe that's what five it comes out and but yeah they're all still high school kids you right. know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. that's be, and, and netflix had a hit on that after season one so why they didn't just film seasons two three four and five like i wonder right if it's away partially uh, a business decision as well though because then they could say like, okay, this they can map out 
all right, this is coming in two years. So they know, okay, subscribers will be like, okay, I got to stick around. And now I know some people go monthly and stuff, but they, they probably all look at this on a big board that they're looking five years ahead and they can go, okay, this is going to come out here. We got production for this because all of these things on all of these streamers, they're all, I mean, we look at the individual show, like the last of us is in two years, but like you said, John, it seems to be the norm. And then when the show comes back on, you're like, oh my God, it's been two years already because we're all watching so much other content that we're like whereas what happened what are we saying about star wars ah it's too much too fast you can never make every but we can never be happy you know <laughs> it's so funny it's like right, but like i said i just feel like these studios just are so hesitant to commit to yeah it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is a lot of mm. money, but but like Amazon, right? Like they paid a billion dollars to get the Rings of Power. There is no world in which they're not going to make at least three seasons of that. So right. why do we have to wait to like? They should never stop filming. It, they should have filmed. I think all they three did. I think they seasons. actually did film those in in order. I think well, they, I mean, I from know. what I understand, those that they weren't waiting on that, that one there, I know foundation, they had three, they it's did gonna be they three were, years between seasons. I think, well, they, no, they got another one coming. This it's coming. Foundation's dropping again. Uh, hasn't it been two it, years now or it's been at least no, it's dro yeah, it's dropping in a late spring or, or a summer foundation okay. is coming this year. Maybe so it's only, years. yeah, no, it's been a year. It well, a year and a half. It was last fall. That foundation was out, not like not um, you know six months ago, but like a year and a half. So it'll be almost. Right. So it'll two be years. two years almost by the time it comes yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. So that's about right. But yeah, it, it flies. It's surprising. Well, it does because there's never because like with HBO, they run one show at a time. It's not like I mean they have all kinds of other programming, but like they have one like Last of Us ended. Succession starts next week. It'll right. run for nine weeks, and when mm -hmm. it's done, the next big show runs. Like they only run one show at a right. time that matters. You know, it's Correct. not like Netflix right. where they drop everything all at once. Yeah, um, and then you've got Prime that does crazy. Like I can't figure out how they do what they do. You yeah. know, like I'm watching Daisy Jones and the Six. Have you guys started watching this at all? No. Um, it's a pretty good show, but they're dropping three episodes a week now oh. instead of two or one. It's like. Either give it to me all at once, yeah, <laughs> or don't make me watch three hours a week of it. <laughs> you know what I They're mean? Not making you. You could well, still pace yourself out. <laughs> like, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't do that because the it's problem is it's, it's good. And right. after I got to the end of the third episode, I just wanted the last four. Like that's all that's left now. You know, I just give me the rest of it. But you're going to get that whole ten episode show in like three weeks. And it doesn't, right. I don't understand why they're doing that. You know, yeah. one show gets one a week. Prime, Amazon is like all over the place with their stuff. You know, yeah. well, um, let's, <laughs> let's talk about quickly then while we're, we'll, we'll segue right to it. Yeah. This I'm one's doing through. two a week <laughs> and it's done. No, it's got one more week. Just 10 oh, episodes. I yeah. thought it was only eight. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Well, did you think it was over? Yeah. That's it's not. I, no, it's, exactly. there's no, it what it wasn't ended. I was that's why I was bringing it up. I was going to yeah. ask you. I'm like it says it's the final season, but they ended it like Yeah. I two thought more, were, just one more oh, week. Awesome. All right. Cool. See, I I also <laughs> thought it was only 8 and I thought it was going to be finished this yeah. week as well, but then when I got to the end of that episode, I was like, surely that's not the end of this, the show. And yeah. I went and looked and there's one more. Yeah, there's one more week. So, yeah, it, it, was it finishes like, up this week. It's so funny. because I'm literally finding this out right now. Um, <laughs> it, I did not know that. I didn't look it up. I didn't have time. And I actually I'm uh, part of me is a very slightly disappointed. I thought I had done well. Like the last, I went to finish I went it all <laughs> to finish it all on time. Same with the last of us. Cause I'm like, th the weeks are getting very busy here. I got two carnival rows. I got a last of us. I got a Mandalorian. You know, I am watching the bad batch. I'm a little behind on that one, but I'm like trying to keep all these shows. And like, I was like, all right, I finished last of us and carnival row. And I'm like, Oh, my week feels so much lighter. I can watch some movies and stuff too. Maybe Man, you got Ted Lasso tomorrow. Mm. I know. Yeah, but I watch that upstairs with Jen. That's okay. different. I don't go down. I don't have to. Go I mean, that's only anything. thirty minutes once a week. So right, and that's mm -hmm. one of those ones where you're like, you get upset when it's over, and you're like, oh, now I got to wait yeah, a week for right. another half hour. Mm -hmm. Shrinking but, ends on Friday. I know that's another one. I love. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a great one. Jen and I watched that as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Carnival Row again. I it's what did you, I mean? You're not getting you're getting it in. Your, I, it, I it yeah, I had to fantastic. watch. Him. Yeah, it looks great. I had oh to watch God. these the last four episodes. Actually, I've watched in my bedroom. So no yeah. surround sound or anything, but the picture, they, it still looks fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. And, and th this is one of the reasons that I've been messing with my settings and not, or just checking my settings, making, <clears throat> making sure I'm getting the most out of the bulb life that I have. And my, my brights are as bright as they can, because this has all those gradations and it, it's just such a, a well produced um video wise well produced show that and and that's not to say that the sound isn't the sound is it's it's amazing show um really enjoying it and now I'm really excited I got two more to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so yeah there you go we'll, John and I can discuss the finale next week I thought I was like this was a weird finale for a final and season. I'll actually get the I'll actually have those on the I'll be watching them in the theater you know with the projector so nice yeah. nice so all right. Um, Not to right, derail so, you too, but by the way, don't you have like ten minutes left before you? I got. So, I, that's what, well, no, <laughs> I've got. I, I can push it, so that's why I'm just trying to. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll make it. Don't worry, <laughs> we will make it. Um, let's see. So we did that. We did that. Uh, why don't you go with your second one there? Yeah. Okay. So this is the end of the Rocky set. Um, Rocky versus Drago. Rocky for the ultimate director's cut, as I've learned that that's the title of it. Um, so yeah, this is the end of that set. I haven't watched the theatrical version of Rocky Four in 4K because I didn't have the time. So, but I have been looking forward to this for ages. Um, very pleased to report. Um, it was very enjoyable indeed. Um, do I prefer it to the theatrical one? No, I don't think I do. Mm -hmm. But it's fascinating for those of us that know every line, every scene, every bit of the theatrical one. Watching this is absolutely riveting. Um, I enjoyed every second of it. Um, so I, I think it's great just seeing all these extra little, little little nuances little subtleties in the in you know in in the apollo sort of fight the, the earlier in the in the in the film and then the the final fight and the extra dialogue and the way in which it's it's coming out i thought it was really really interesting um so it's great to have and i'm really glad i've seen it and i'm going to watch it again um in the not too distant future um so well worth seeing well worth owning john i'm talking to you Okay. I, I know. Hey, I almost, well, it's down to 46 bucks now. So it's already dropped $20. No, um, so it's, uh, it's 46 no, it's bucks. It's at 46 bucks on Amazon. Like I think 39 95 is my, is my buy, my buy price. <laughs> hovering over the, uh, over the, the, the hovering that's over. Cart. Um, uh, so yeah, so, so very, very interesting. And, and again, if you're a fan of this film, you, you really need to get this, this disc because it's got mm -hmm. both on it. Um, now in terms of the, the, the 4k image quality is very nice. Um, really good. Um, I've got no timestamps for this. Um, it's just, it's really, really good. It looks great. Um, the, the white snow, the, the, you know, when they get to Russia, all that mm. stuff looks fantastic. The HDR really, really adds something to that. Um, again, all the details on the close ups, the beads of sweat, all this stuff looks really, really good. Um, and the, 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 the music number, the, you know, I live in America, the James Brown music number has never looked brighter and better than in this. Um, so it's really good. And the, the neural X was great as well. So another winner for me on this set, I think this Rocky set is great. Um, and as long as you watch it in the, in the way, which I talked about last week, then absolutely get this, enjoy it. You know, don't listen to the people on Twitter that are giving it all this stuff about, oh, it's it's ruined it. It's the end of the world. It's not the experience I want. It's nonsense. Um, it, it isn't my, the experience. Yeah. It's yeah. this this movie, by the end of the movie, you don't feel the same way as you do when you watch mm. the original Rocky IV. Yeah. yeah it's right? all kinds of different inflections and different things. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a yeah. different oh. tone. I mm. prefer the original. I mean, yeah. the original, mm -hmm. when you're done, it's it's a music video and you want to run through a wall, right? Yeah. By the end yeah. of this one, you don't feel that way at all. It's a complete, no. it's more political. It, um, mm -hmm. It's actually more of a film than the original yes. one, right? 
Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. more of a, like it's more of a, it's got a, a more of a story to it. A couple of those scenes with, with Apollo in the, in mm-hmm. the, they kind of use the same shot twice <laughs> later yeah, on they do. in the they courtyard do. there or whatever in his mm-hmm. yard. Yeah. Um, but it, it just, it adds a different, it, um, it's very, I want to say subtle, but it's not subtle, but it, it, it really mm. is. It should be experienced, especially if you love the first one and to go mm. through this and knowing what you're, what you want to get out of it. And then at the end you go, where did all that hype go? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but it's still a good movie. It's yeah. It, it's a it's a, it's a movie made by a more mature filmmaker than Stallone was back in the eighties. You know, mm. this is this is a movie made by someone looking back and 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 trying to 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 change the dynamics of this. You know, I, I and I think that's why there's the ratio change as well. It's it, that that was interesting too. I, as I said, I think this is this is him making the, a film that 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 is that was not the film he wanted to make back then but is the film that he would have made now had he shot this today, right. if that makes sense. Oh, that sounds wrong. But it is definitely a more mature movie, much more shades of grey, much more um, uh, dialogue heavy. And, well, not much more, but more. Right. There is, you know, Apollo's, Apollo's kind of stuff about, the, you know, if you were my friend, you wouldn't stop this, you know, and that kind of stuff, that, so that extra layering of guilt, which was not, you know, always clear in the original one. I, right. yeah, I, I thought it was fantastic and much yeah. more humanizing of Drago. Drago is not just a monster in this. Yes. There are, you know, and it doesn't mean there's much more dialogue. There's a bit more dialogue, but just the looks he gives gives Rocky during the fight, and those, you know, he's much more human in this. Well, um, what about I, the I just, brilliant? What about when he leaves the? And this wasn't in the original. When he leaves the press conference. Yeah. And Drago stands up and is looking at Rocky when they're talking mm. about the Christmas fight, you know, on Christmas yeah. Day. And they're like, we le- we're we leaving. And he gets up and he was kind of like his expression and everything. It's from a distance, but his expression, he didn't say anything. It was just mm. all his expression and looking at Rocky like, hmm, like I think he respected him. And, yeah. you know, he didn't dismiss him the way everybody mm. else was. And there, there was a, so much more to, to this yeah. that it, again, at the end, you're not like, well, where did that, that hype go? <laughs> but <laughs> it, it is, it's, it's a, it's a different film mm. and it, it's amazing mm. how they can manipulate you like that, which is that in yeah. itself is, it makes it that interesting. So. Yeah, you can imagine film students studying these these two and writing theses yeah. on, on the differences and the changes and, and what dramatic impact that has. Yeah, I thought it was great. I'm so glad to have both. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really interesting. It, it, everything yeah. I hoped I would get from this, I got. So, yeah, great. Really, really good. Cool. And, again, a good home cinema experience as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do next? Let's, um, let's do uh, Mandalorian. We all saw mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. all right, Steve, why don't you lead us off because you didn't have as much fun with episode one and or yeah, episode we 17, all thought it was a little slower, but we, <laughs> you know, how did this one do for you? This was better. This was be- a bit, well, better. Yeah, definitely better in terms of the action, in terms of the pacing, in terms of the story, <clears throat> some very foolish decisions made by, uh, Jin Jarin in this, you know, the, uh, I'm just going to wander into this abandoned city and, you know, where I've already been attacked and I'm not going to make any precautions. I'm just going to walk right in and let's see what happens. I didn't think that was a bit odd. Um, and that happens again and again, which is a bit strange, but, um, but you know, much better. I really enjoyed it. I like some of the creative stuff in this as well. I like the, the robot. Did he remind you of Grievous, General Grievous? It did me. I was sort of watching it with the arms and the way it was moving. Yeah, made me think yeah. of General Grievous. Yeah, and I, I Joe actually whether, said that. Yeah, yeah, I wondered whether it was going to turn out that he, that he'd survived and that actually this was, you know, oh, Grievous's yeah. little creature left, you know, just the eye. Um, so, so that was interesting. No, I thought it was good, and I liked how it how it played out. Again, the story stuff not quite withstanding. Um, so, yeah, no, it was good, much better, and it looked better too. I, I, you know, I liked some of the HDR, and this was really nice. Um, and yeah. uh, you know, the the video was good, the audio was good. Yeah, this is this is this was better for me. Yeah, John. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we talked about it. You and I talked about it last week on the phone. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm more in than I was. Uh, mm. I mean, I was always going to watch it, so I can't say I'm all in because <laughs> yeah. I was always going to be all in. But I feel the same way as Steve. Like I was pretty let down by the first episode, and I actually went back and watched it again 
before this one because Lydia fell asleep the week before. Um, <laughs> and so we watched the first episode together. And even after the second viewing, I still wasn't all that <laughs> pumped up about it. But this episode brought me in uh, quite a bit more. So I'm looking forward to see where it goes. Um, yeah. And, you know, like Steve said, some questionable decisions notwithstanding but uh, uh, yeah but yeah i thought i thought the whole thing was uh, was excellent so um, yeah i i definitely. agree like like we said it's like I, i'm i'm fine with the story as it is um because i i expect that it is going to get better that's why i said last right. week but mm. home theater wise like the underwater scenes and that like the, the picture quality. And th like I said, this is one of the, this is the best the Mandalorian has looked picture wise. I mean, the, the contrast is just, just fantastic. Um, getting back to like the conversation I have with um, Mike Schramm on Tuesday, this is one of the shows that when I first got the Lumigen, I went back and watched the earlier episodes. And while it does improve it, you can still see like, you know, season one of The Mandalorian just looks a little bit washed out compared to season two and now season three. It's like each one, I feel like the contrast got better. Right. Um, and this one's like, it's just like Blu-ray quality. You know, I mean, this is just really, really good um, and just really enjoying it. And the sound as well. Uh, again, like we were talking earlier, if this gets a, a physical release, I mean, how do you not own these things? They're just mm. – they're, they're going to be yeah. so great. Yeah. You know, I mean, because this one here, like I said, I'm like, it's just a great home theater experience. So if it gets a physical release, you, you got to buy them. <laughs> you just got to. So at least I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll only buy it once, though. Yeah, you say that. I think. <laughs> Depends on how many different ways they offer it. it true. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. No. Um, speaking of that, have you seen that they, there's – I'm getting the information from listeners. People are forwarding to me. More and more people are talking about speakers in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's getting it's getting some hype like where are we going next the floor <laughs> it's like some people are sending me those every now and then so it's pretty funny i'm like hey okay <laughs> yeah it's only two years ago i talked about that it was tom andrew and i were talking the first time i was like that's the next area we gotta go so all right um what do we have next what do you want to do uh your number um Number four there, Steve. Yep. Okay. So this is my new thing because what I'm intending to do is make sure – cool, that's a new uh, – yeah, that's not a not post a picture I've seen. That's an interesting one. Because um, what I think I do – one, I'm, I like horror movies that not everybody else likes. And also I've got – because of where we are over here, I've got some below-the-line movies that not everyone would have heard of. Um, and so this is one trying to sort of look for movies that are interesting that maybe people haven't seen. Um, and this was the first one that I've been meaning to revisit. So this is The Girl with All the Gifts, um, which is a, a British film from 2016. Um, it is a, a post-apocalyptic, if there is such a thing. Um, so I suppose it's always apocalyptic, isn't it? There's no such thing as a post-apocalyptic. Um, so it's an, apo uh, an apocalyptic. You rebuild. Film. Yeah, well, well yeah. Um, so an apocalyptic film. Um, see if this sounds familiar. <clears throat> a fungus has grown and has taken over and killed a lot of people who have then become zombies. And um, and then this is about the survivors, um, and this is a, a, a should make of, a video oh, game about that. They should they should you know what they should they absolutely and then they should turn that into a series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, now, but bearing in mind though, this was made and released before the game, so I suppose you know who's copying who. But anyway, um, so very interesting film, British film, quite a low budget movie with Gemma Arterton, Paddy Considine, Glenn Close in it as well. Um, and this this follows the, the the movie opens with children in a bunker who are being um, taught but also f greatly feared by the adults and they're very worried and you're not sure why it is that the adults are treating them they literally will only move them at gunpoint um, and yeah, you're not quite sure why that is and then as the story develops it becomes apparent um, but it's a very very well done thriller stroke horror um, really good film and well worth seeing if it's on Netflix over there watch it or whatever if it's on a streaming service give it a go um, failing that I would recommend picking it up it's a really good film I watched it in Blu-ray um, Neuralex uh, up mixing surprise surprise um, and it's got a very nice 
video transfer, and a particularly good audio mix. So again, as I said, up mixed in your Alexa, I do have some timestamps here. Um, we have a, an attack on the base where this is all taking place at 25 minutes, where you get lovely pans, you get movement, you get gunshots echoing all around, but you get vehicles that are sort of screaming past. So you get pans from left to right. Um, you've got all kinds of distant echoes as the gunfires rattling around, um, as well as the noises of these creatures and everything else. So that's very nice. Um, at one hour bang on, you also get at what, what I've titled a dog diversion. So where they're using a dog to basically um, cause these creatures, as I'll call them, um, to, to chase the dog so they can get away. And what happens is the dog runs around a, the side of a building, comes past the camera, and then all of these creatures are pursuing. And so they come around and then go right to the back of the room as well. So you get this lovely movement of sound from front to back as they run past, which is really good. Um, and then lastly, at one hour and 24, um, I've titled this, You Need It More Than I Do, um, where a, a, a character is is um, set upon in a grocery store. That's obviously, it's all smashed up. And he's set upon by these creatures again i don't want to give too much away but what is very cool about this is that the soldier falls to the floor is on his back looking up and these creatures are on top of the shelves and you hear them the the noise come from floor level to the side walls and then up into the speakers above your listening position and so you can hear them above you as he's on his back looking up and it's got it's a really clever sound effect, which would only be done by the neural X, only pushing it up into the up into the upper speakers. So it's really, really nice and 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 adds some sort of um adds to the to the to the enjoyment of the film. So yeah, I really recommend this. This is well worth seeing. Um and again, probably a film many people won't have heard of. I don't suppose yeah. either of you guys have seen it or heard Never of it. No, heard of it. No, no. It's it is Never well worth seeing. It. Um, and and something that, that you know you'd be discussing for a while afterwards in terms of again what would you do but the treatment of these kids you know mm. it's, it's very very interesting and it does not have a Hollywood ending by any means the ending the ending's very unusual so well worth uh, well worth digging out it's one for you John I think if not for you it's, Dee. it's <laughs> available on uh, you can get it on Amazon right now for fourteen ninety nine oh, okay well buy yeah, it new fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, or maybe I'm sorry, new from fourteen fifty four, fourteen dollars and fifty four cents. Okay. But yeah, so but fourteen ninety nine. And that's yeah, Lionsgate Films. It's been out here yeah. since uh twenty seventeen on Blu ray. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, it, it's well so, worth seeing. It's one of those films people may not have heard of, but but it's yeah. it's good. It's really good. And especially if you you know, if you finished House of the Dragon and you want to see more Paddy Considine, who I've met yeah. by the way, and he's a very nice guy. Um and so uh, if you want more Paddy Considine or you finish The Last of Us and you want some more fungal uh you know the creature zombies. movies. <laughs> fungal yeah, then 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 this is this is for you. <laughs> fungal fun. Fungal yeah, fun. There yeah. you go. I can, there you go. I can I can molds and fungus. Yes. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Um, all right. <laughs> all righty. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? I'm going to uh, skip a couple of the ones that, you know, they're, they're repeats anyways. But uh, let's do this one because this will be quick because I don't think a mm. lot of people, neither of you have seen Babylon yet, right? Not yet. No. I've heard not good things. Same. Really? What did yeah. you hear? Yeah. See, what did you hear? Uh, that it that it's overwrought, that it's too long, and that it's rubbish. Oh my god, <laughs> that's I, what I'd heard. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I love the cast, but I, I yeah, heard. Oh bad, my god, yeah. I heard bad things. It too. is long, but mm. I by the end of it, if you love like the history of movies or even the idea of it, okay, mm. um, the ending to this, I was just like, I got chills. I was like, after sitting, it, it was awesome. It's over the top. It is everything that you, that's why it's Babylon, right? It's everything is extravagant. Everything is over the top. It is adult, like adult. It's, I'm surprised it's rated R. I mean, a lot of, they, they go like, this is opening type scene, not very, not as soon as the, camera's role is it this but it's like literally two minutes in and it's like a scene out of caligula it, but 
But like what you're seeing on the screen right now, what you've seen in the commercials and all the trailers and stuff, that's kind of the opening scene. It's just everything's over the top. Um, it, but then it's the story of of acting and, and movie making and behind the scenes and stuff. Now, the home theater experience, absolutely amazing. Absol- it blew me away the the hdr because what they utilize here is so like when they're shooting a scene and that you're supposed to be behind the scenes this takes place in the 1920s and they're shooting a scene and everything is vibrant and everything is like just uh, you know larger than life the colors and everything and then they'll go and cut and everything gets washed out like your screen just goes <laughs> they're like now you're just looking and it looks normal but there's one particular scene probably 15 minutes into the movie where they come you come into the set which is out in in like the desert area and there's a bunch of sets going on and you see how they film movies or their portrayal of filming movies in the 1920s the sets were vibrant like so you're 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 but you could still see the background of like the desert type area and that's washed out you get you got to see it to understand what I'm talking about. It's amazing. The music in this is absolutely amazing. It's like the 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 horns, a lot of horn music, um, the jazz music type. But there's the horns, the drums, the all around you. It's awesome. It's I was like engrossed the entire three hours just sitting there for the home theater part. Then you get into the movie making part and then what it's like to be an actor, what it's like for these characters, what's going on. There's a huge there's a great scene with Brad Pitt. And I don't I forget the woman's name. She's on your screen right now. She's all the way to the right there. What's her name? Oh, sorry. Not Margot Robbie. Sorry. Jean not Margot Robbie. Um, Jean yeah. Smart. I, Oh, is that that's Jean Smart there? Okay. She has this, she summarizes everything for Brad Pitt's character in this. And it's an awesome, awesome scene. Um, and then you get to the you get to the ending and everything just just like gets summarized for you. And it's like I, I, that's when I got the chills. It was just, I had a lot of fun with this, but it is, it's long, it's over the top, it's crazy at times, but I, I really enjoyed it. And home theater wise, I feel like picture and sound wise, this is got, it's, it's almost a must own. Uh, mm. It's, it's that good uh, to me. I had a blast mm. with it. So, but I know a lot of people haven't seen it. It's just out. Uh, so but I, I, I recommend it for a picture, picture alone, but then you add the sound in there too. It's, it's fantastic. So I saw a shot on Twitter of, um, from it where someone's walking along the side of a, of a, uh, uh, whatever you call it, you know, a studio thing, a back lot. And as they're walking along in the background, there is a billboard for house of the dragon. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's through awesome. the trees. There's That's a tiny awesome. little billboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's hysterical. <laughs> Probably. There's, but yeah. you, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you got to see some stuff in here. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I bet you I know that scene too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it. Yeah, I, I think it's it's great. I thought I had a blast with it. So if you get to see it, let me know. Okay, what you think? Uh, all right, what do you want to go with? Next? Well, shall I skip to number six? Deej, because five is only a screener anyway, and there's let's not do, much to no, say let's, about it. Let's wrap up. I was going to wrap up with that one. Yeah. So okay. We'll so do, do you want uh, to do five? Yeah. Do do your number five. There okay. We go. So so nice and quickly then. So Scream Six, uh, which I saw on a screener this week. It it um, came out in the cinemas here last weekend. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Perfect. But I've heard. Yeah. There exactly you go. Yeah, that was heard, quick, wasn't yeah. it? No. It's it's a it's a. Um, I'm a I'm a big Scream fan, as you guys will know. Um, really like Scream One, really like Scream Two, Scream Three and Four. Yeah, 
five is is we really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I know you're holding it for Halloween, aren't you, Deej? Um, Scream five, um, <laughs> and then and then six is it's more like three and four for me. Um, uh. Unfortunately, they take it to New York, which promises you know all sorts of delights, um, and uh, unfortunately, it, it goes there, and then it just kind of it, it's not that exciting, and it could have been filmed anywhere really, um, and uh, and and it gets it just wraps itself up in knots with ridiculous plot points after another um and and it just gets just gets silly um you know people get stabbed and then the next minute they are fine and they've been repeatedly <laughs> stabbed and virtually disemboweled and yet the next scene they're okay and walking around and running around mm. um it's it's yeah it's not great um I'm, i will get the 4k disc when it comes out because i want to try it again and see if it's any good um and see if i like it more the second time which i might do but uh, but first time around not great for me, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, so there we go. But never mind. Never mind. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> all, right. uh, all right. Let's wrap up with this. your last one, which I also okay. took in. Um, I've oh, had good. it for a while. I watched it before. I saw you throw it in your notes, and I had some time, mm. so I watched it yet again. And uh, I added to your notes as well. So let's yeah, go with that. that. We've got, <laughs> I've got like s- literally seven minutes. So okay, right. Let's do this. Do you want to do your bit first? Do you want me to do it? Uh, no, just start just <laughs> okay. the core. Yeah, so- let's just go on disc in 4K with uh, DTS Master Audio, and I saw it on Kaleidoscape in 4K HDR with DTS Master Audio. Okay. Now I thought I'd seen this film. I, and, and, you know, if you'd asked me last week, I'd have said I've definitely seen it, but it looks like I haven't because I didn't know anything about this. Really? So I bought it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I, I was convinced I'd seen it, but no, I haven't seen it okay. as it turned out as I started to watch. You saw it, right, John? Uh, I think in, I did. But in the past, yeah. Maybe I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, where I'll, they I'll go be... to the center of the earth instead, you know, it's the yeah, Armageddon, yeah. but they go I, the yeah. other direction. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. I don't it's remember from, much uh, about it, but. 2003. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah, well, but so this was definitely my first watch of it, and I had a great time with it. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, you've absolutely got to leave your brain at the door. Um, and this is not so much science fiction it's as not moonfall, science, but yeah, <laughs> science. What science? Um, and well, I and I've read on the IMDb afterwards that this is shown to um people at like Caltech and MIT and stuff, and the students are asked, right, how many things wrong with this can you find? <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so it's completely nonsense but it's really good fun and i did enjoy it i was never less than entertained throughout yeah. it's really good um now in terms of the home cinema experience because obviously i know we're pushed for time a bit um i thought the disc and obviously i'm only talking about the disc was very good indeed and mm. especially for a catalog release um you know 2003 you know it's fine the only problem is the effects are rubbish yeah and it really does show the effects the model works not as good and all that yeah stuff. but it's not as bad as the ending from uh air force one air force one yeah it's I not <laughs> as bad as that which i was pleasantly surprised but it, mm. it, it's like you could see the evolution a little mm. bit like okay that's better so when we saw this in 2003 we were like whoa that was that was so realistic <laughs> but compared to today you're like Ugh. <laughs> yeah yeah the, the model work and the Rome attack thing is not good um yeah. it looks exactly what it is which is a model and badly composited um so yeah so so but it, i was really entertained i really enjoyed it so in terms of the video video is really really nice it is sharp the the, the, the again every pop mark and 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 pour on the skin is, is, is on the actors is clear there's some lovely detail in the background delroy lindo's kind of building has yes all, it's made of corrugated iron and you get these lovely sharp lines yep. there's no moiring there's no kind of um fitzing on those they, it's sharp as anything it looks great yep. um and in, and inside the the, the ship the ship thing, yep looks like a giant marital aid but inside the ship you've got these all these sort of these detail all the details all the, the stuff on the things all the all the um you know the the uh the the consoles and that all lit up and all look great so i i thought video wise it's really good and again i appreciate it's a cliche the only thing better than the video was the audio which i thought was really really nice as well that's a nice segue right there can i interrupt you for a second yeah of course yeah of course look on the bright side at least we're not going to boil to death you always look on the bright side always I got that. How do you not? I mean, come on, people. (laughs) Come on. That's from the core. (laughs) It goes right to the core. (laughs) uh, Exactly. So, out of that, I made. We're on the bright side. We can play that sounder whenever we want. And we're like, always. 
we got John's him. face. <laughs> yeah. John's like, oh. oh, yeah. And then we have Hillary. Oh, uh, it's still playing. Um, hmm. But yeah, so I made all of those. I'm like, I saw that in the movie. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to like, gotta make that. Cl- I got to clip that. <laughs> uh, so I've got a few timestamps on it. Just, to, yeah, you uh, do. just some things which. Um, so within the first three minutes, we get a nice bass rumble with this at the start where you mm-hmm. kind of get a kind of an earthquake type thing. And that's actually not bad. It's not it's not room rearranging. But it is no. it is fairly impactful. You feel it. You yeah. can tell it's there. So that was good. We then get some. So we get some bass rumbles. We get some pans where we've got uh, vehicles out in the street moving. There's an ambulance that comes right. There's also the screen. Uh, uh, to go along with the podcast. There's also a clock ticking too, much like Maverick. Mm-hmm. The clock ticking on the left side of the room, which is pretty cool. I saw that. I heard that at the beginning of the movie too. It was like. Yeah, it's it's class. and I like the echoes in the lecture theater as well. You can hear the, le- mm-hmm. the the echoes around the lecture theater. So that's all in the first three minutes. So that already bodes well. You're thinking, oh, okay, nice. This is going to be yep. something special. Um, and at 52 minutes, then jumping forward a bit. Sorry, eight minutes. Sorry, uh, Trafalgar Square, which is where yeah. you've got the pigeon attack. At, well, pigeon and fish attack. So I understand um, there is a ran- <laughs> there is a random fish in there somewhere. Apparently, um, yep. I didn't see it, but I no, read about I it either. and I was told about it on Twitter. Um, and so you get then the birds flying around the room and they go up and they go over and they come, they go all around. Um, that's something that the neural X really brings to life. Yeah. Um, so, and then of course you get the crashing buses and you get the, you know, the screams and all that stuff. So I think that's a really nice sequence. Um, at 52 minutes, then you get the launch. So that's the launch of the giant marital aid. Um, and that, that goes <laughs> under the, into the water and you get then the, 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 the movement, the, the whale song and all that stuff. And then of course, once they go into it, you get all the nice sort of noises and rumbles with that, which I thought was great. Um, and then at 53 minutes, we have Stanley Tucci, apparently. Yes. Tell me about that, Deej. <laughs> so that is, it's right after the launch and Stanley Tucci, he, if you remember, he talks into his recorder like this mm. at times. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so they show him at the launch and he's talking, like documenting it, documenting it to himself, Mm -hmm. but it pans off to the right because the camera goes on him and pans down to the left because the every, you know, it's going down everybody in the ship. The reason I made note of it is what's it's, it's cool because it pans to the right, but this isn't true Atmos. It isn't true object based. And had it been, I think his pan would have gone up to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like he actually goes up above the right, where your right speaker would be. It goes up to the corner and I'm looking where I was looking, where he would be is right where my overhead is. But Mm -hmm. because we're up mixing this to neural X, neural X doesn't know that's where he is. It's just up mixing it. It's panning it correctly the way it was made off to the to the right side and in 2003 that was a big deal but Mm -hmm. now if you put this in an object base that would actually pan up above the screen the way it should have and i just thought it was pretty cool like you know a little bit that was something that could be improved someday so Mm. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was very cool. And then at one thirty, so one hour thirty, you've got the San Francisco um, uh, attack, which is really nice as well. Again, you get the booms, you get the movement of the audio. It's really really nice. Um, and then lastly, then one fifty five, you then get the the mm-hmm. explosions where the various things go off, and that had real heft to it. Um, so I thought that was yeah. really really good. And I would I was very pleasantly surprised at the audio and video from this. It's a Paramount catalog title that they could have just dumped on four K and. We We'd have all been like, well, it's nice to own it. And that would have been that. We'd have all been quite happy. But I think this is actually a very nice catalog release. Really good video, really nice audio, um, and well worth picking up, I would say. Sorry, I know the time's getting away mm. from us, Deed. So it's really, really good. And I, I recommend this. I, I really I do, do too. It, it, I, I, I enjoyed it. I've owned it multiple times in different formats. Um, I bought this a while ago on Kaleidoscape and it, they had it in 4k. I don't know why it was on my wish list a while ago anyways. But, uh, but yeah, I saw you throw it on yesterday. I think you put it mm. on your notes yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, definitely. I, I enjoy this movie. I think it's one mm. of the better of the, you know, end of the world movies. Mm. Um, and yeah, of course, the science problems always is with these things. <laughs> it's like, but um, but yeah. So, all right. Uh, highly recommend that as well. Yeah. All right. That's it, boys. 
I've got 30 seconds to get to my next meeting. <laughs> All right. So, next meeting. I, I, seriously, I have to. And I'm hosting no, it. So there's people sitting there waiting. Like, where's DJ? Hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I got to get in there. So, um, <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching all of that fun stuff. What do we got to do? Go push play. What he said. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Bye, guys. Hey, Fred. This has been a Hey, Fred production with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions.